but the sunshine and the duke of tears and empress about to begin give him love to all the ancestors that's tuning in here comes the duke of tears with some more offering going out to the all men City block, big buffalo, people coming back to wreck shop. Shit, pop them out and pop, can't stop the rebirth for raw. Indigenous rock, rip the native chance, chance, strikes war dance, dance, and a glance. Anyone who glances, check them war dance, war dance. Keep seven cents out, out, the mortgage cold up, out, out, out. Make all these 14th Amendment rappers throw in their towels. Quit commerce and travel, these mazes taking oaths, disrespecting ancestors, selling their souls to go, go, ace my glass, make a toast. Taking it back from the tomb of the bones when we come.
peace, 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 peace. You're now rocking to the sound or the education and the entertainment purposes only. You're now rocking with your brother A1, a.k.a. Tonchinish One, a.k.a. Ahano Kiel. I got my brother Bap, Big Aboriginal Power, on the platform with me. And we're going to go in pretty much on... um white slavery or aboriginal slave owners and so-called white slaves um oh yeah i meant to tell you that my bad i want to cut you off but uh change the title it don't say slaves it says saved oh shit. Hold on, so uh add the l in there shout out to everybody in the building make sure y'all hit that like button thumb up the video support the channel my channels is down right now both of my channels is down don't forget go to sister betty channel sister soul channel Supreme Chief Holiday Panel, go purchase y'all pay-per-view tickets for tomorrow. Pan-Africanism is dead. Make sure y'all go purchase those. Shout out to everybody that's in the building. Roger W., Craig Lawyer, King T., DJ, Roger, Rod, uh, Rodney Gilmore, Mother of Dragons. We see y'all in here. Patrick Gabriel, y'all know the guys, they get obsessions. We deep. Shout out to everybody in the building. Drop them fire emojis and subscribe to the channel. Peace to the gods, man. Um, what happened to your channel? They got them bitches blocked for some reason. They got them blocked, really. As of when? As of that, from from that last bill we done? Uh, I don't know. Like, I had, had to be from my last bill. It don't tell me why. It keeps saying it's an error occurring when I try to look into disputing it. Uh, and my main channel been on strike for like sixty days now. So. Oh wow. I mean, my backup channel been on strike for 60 days already, so I don't know what's going on. I'm trying to figure that out right now as we speak, man. Don't worry. We'll get, we'll get you back up and running. But for the meantime, your brother right here, he got your back. Don't worry about right. it. Right. And I, you did some fire bills yesterday, two of them back to back. That was very well needed. And I'm looking forward to today's show, man. No doubt. No doubt. Um, You got that <laughs> source. You got a source, too. Um. I was looking for on white slavery. So Which one? one the one you pulled up, the one you had on your um channel that day when you was pulled um when we was reading through it. I don't know if that came from um Michael Hoffman, but I got both of Michael Hoffman, but I couldn't find that shit. I screenshot. Yeah, yeah, it. It, 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 it's from they, 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 they were white. white and and so is it this one right here? Let me see something. When it says Indian, Indian Negroes own Indian, slave. Indian Negroes own slave. You got an echo for some reason. I don't know if it's you got an echo for some reason. I don't know if it's me. Oh no, nah, you know what that is. Hold up. Hold up. Let me, me go back up. I'm gonna stop sharing. No, nah, hold up. You know what it is? I sound better now. Let me see. Yeah, hell yeah. There we go. All right, uh, you know what it is. Oh, man, you it, went back, that... it went back to it. It went back to it. All right. Yeah. Um. Let me see something. When you screen share, it puts that echo. You got to do it without the sound. You got to do it without the yeah. sound. Yeah, that's what I was um, doing. But you said echoing. Let me see Shout something. Shout out to everybody in the building, man. Hit that like button, man. Hey, one back in the motion, man. I know y'all lit for this, man. No doubt, no doubt, man. Um, Yeah, I, I seen it wasn't nobody going live, man. And I've been wanting to, I told you I was going to do that build the last couple of days and I just like every time I, I pull up everything and get to I'm like man I don't feel like doing this shit or whatever um but you know the other day man the L's moved me and the L's you know they pretty much communicated with me that I need to get back on the scene you know what I'm saying so for the most part you know um we back at this um aboriginal slave owners I'm saying aboriginal slave owners cause they title is black and African Americans and we're gonna um deal with white slavery and um you know we we have done these builds um you know i've been on other platforms and presented you know certain information and i also have a bill um on william ellison and the william ellison bill kind of covers a lot of things in its entirety this is going to be a crash course this is going to be an up-to-date version of of the william ellison bill and and the so-called negro slave owners so with that let's get into it um but ap i'm gonna come back to you matter of fact you know what why you why you saying stuff hold up let me see real quick all right so this is they was white and they were slaves now where you said that source was at the one you had uh it gets into uh slavery in america 
it's gonna uh it'll be a couple articles down you can do your search if you want to just put in white slaves and then go down and look for it it should have it noted you in uh what book are you reading this is they was white and they were slaves okay perfect let's see uh hold up i think it might be this one here yeah. Uh, nah, keep going. Keep going. Hold keep on, going. That ain't it. Just keep going. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'll tell you when I see it. Hold up one second. Hold up. All right, okay, all right. I'm going to come back to this one. I'm going to make sure I remember this one. So... Keep going. Keep going. I don't know, you might have skipped that motherfucker. Yeah, you, you, you definitely skipped it. I think it's like number 12. Number 12, let me see something. They got numbers on it. Oh, you got white slavery. I put white slaves. Just put white slaves in your search. This how many, hold up. Four, I think that's the same one. All uh, right, that's you said white slaves. Let me see something real quick. So you said white slave. Which one? White slavery in antebellum South. Um, white cargo. Um, no, 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 no. Go back. Go back, go back to what they were white with slaves. When you search in your in your in your search box to what words and what key phrases you're looking for, just type in white slaves, not white slavery. Okay. Uh, shit, damn, I don't now I'm doing that way. way. Go to the beginning. It's gonna start talking about uh, um, uh, white slavery in America. You know what I'm gonna do it up. I'm gonna do it this way. You can put Indians on. You can put Indians on. No, I'm gonna start right here so I can start from one. You said Indians oh, okay. on. Oh. Well, no, just try it that way. If you want to keep going, keep going. It's gonna be like number twelve. It ain't gonna be nowhere in this area. It's gonna start when it start dealing with America. Is it this right, one? Now, mm -hmm. No, click it one more time. Just take your time. I'm gonna help you. One more time. Hit it again. Again. Keep going. Keep going. For some reason, it's passing. All right, don't worry about it. I got enough shit to cover, but I'm going to come yeah, back to good. this. I'm going to come back to it. If you got to send it to me. Or you can present it you. yourself. You can, If you find it, you can present it yourself. So don't even worry about it. Right, like I said, um... You know, I'm do a bill, and I'm always gonna insert this into the minds of the Aborigines. Okay, um, dealing with 
the 1920 Rockefeller go to mold you, to mold you hasn't changed. We always going to go back and we always going to make reference to this, right? So, um, it said, we shall not try to make any of these people nor their children philosophers, men of learning, or science. We have not to raise up from among them authors, editors, poets, men of letters. We shall, we shall search for embryo great artists, painters, musicians, nor shall we cherish even the humbler ambitions to rise up from among them lawyers, doctors, preachers, politicians, statement of whom we have ample supply. Right? It's in a task. Now they got a task. Now their task is to keep you in docility, right? The task we set before ourselves is very simple as well as a very beautiful one to train these people. So to train to train these people according to the history and the science and all of the things that they want to implement into your mind, right? To train these people as we find them to a perfectly ideal life just where they are okay so with that being said we're going to get into it um also i always like to implement this for the readers you know always use the method of cross cross referencing um hold up and always decipher the information that's being told to you all right so always decipher anything that they're telling you. Make sure that you fucking cross-reference anything that they're teaching you before you present it to the people. So with that being said, Aboriginal slave owners and white slaves. So let's get into it. So, all right, we're going to go here real quick. I'm going to start off. I'm going to start off. Matter of fact, you know what? I got to. Let me, well, let me get out of here. Go back. Right, I'm going to mute my mic. Let me know if you can hear this, AP. Make sure y'all go get that pay-per-view, man. Pan-Africanism is dead. The pay-per-view, man. You can purchase it through PayPal, Cash App. Go to Sister Betty, Sister Soul, or Supreme Chief Holidays channel to hear the link. We can't hear nothing. We can't hear nothing, A1. I'm just letting you know we can't hear anything. Y'all ain't hear nothing? nothing. All right, hold up. All right, all right, hold up. You got to share it. You got to share it with the sound. Right, you ain't sharing it with the sound. I I see that already. That's your, that's your that's your first issue. You gotta reshare. Just do it with the sound next time. Make sure y'all go get that pan out in this day of the pay per view, man. It's going down, man. It's going down. It's going down, man. It's going down. Uh, people, you heard that right there. I'm. A, I got to mute my mic so it won't echo. But did you hear that? Yeah, I heard. Yeah, I heard it through bookstore. All right, so let me mute my mic real quick. And there's a growing audience for it. Uh, we've sold several thousand copies, and uh, I think that uh, the more publicity that it gets. Eventually, the audience will grow nationwide and worldwide, God willing. Well, let's start talking about it. i got some questions to ask you. Now, we've been told that black people have been enslaved and oppressed in America for 400 years and that the American people need to make reparations to blacks. Perhaps sometimes it's suggested uh, cash payments. And as a result, uh, they're saying of this black enslavement, that's the least we can do. Now, you've written a book, 
claiming that it was the white people who were actually the first slaves in America. So who owes who, Mr. Hoffman? Well, uh, white people don't owe anyone, uh, Pastor Peters. The fact of the matter is is that uh, white youth today are taught that uh, black slaves and Mexicans and Chinese built this country, uh, while the vast majority of the whites lorded it over them with a whiplash in one hand, you know, and a mint julep in the other. But uh, the documentary record tells a very different story. Uh, up to one half of all the arrivals in the American colonies were white slaves, and they were America's first slaves. Uh, these whites were slaves for life long before blacks ever were, and this white slavery was even hereditary. Uh, white children were born to white slaves, and they were also enslaved. Whites were auctioned on a block with children sold and separated from their parents. Wives were sold and separated from their husbands. Uh, meanwhile, you had free black property owners walking the streets of Man, that's the fucking dagger. Man, that's, that's case closed. Dagger. Look, now check. That's case closed. So look, check this out, right? I know I'm echo. I'm gonna go back. Bro. You see the image right here, the Negro, right? And a so-called European, right? Look at the baby. The baby is a mulatto. You could, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm assuming from the fucking picture. I can't prove it. They don't have mulatto written across his fucking head. But I'm assuming that this Negro right here took this, this Slavic woman and probably in most cases the manumitted. But we're going to get into that, though. I just want to get, I just want to stop it right there to show that. So take that. Remember what the original narrative is. And I'm going to put this out there just for anybody, right? I'm not saying slavery is right among any people. But in a lot of these cases, the, the story they're telling you about slavery is false. These people were servants. These people could not own no land here, according to the great law of peace. And we're going to get all into that. But I'm just putting that out there that slavery, whether it was white people, whether it was any other ethnicity or race, and my book is morally wrong, right? And especially to utilize children as slaves, right? So part of the whole the whole um, motivation for this video is not to try to shame white people or be like, oh yeah, yeah, we we had y'all. Nah, it's not for none of that. It's just to change, get a history back to them. Because understand this, right? With this history, we have post traumatic stress syndrome, which we always um claiming the terminology that we slaves and we don't even know what a fucking slave is never looked the term up never never did no research on it we assuming that a slave is an african that was sold to a european and brought over here in one of these 13 colonies but we're going to get back into it northern and south uh, uh while white slaves are being worked to death in the sugar of uh, Bay of Jamaica in the West Indies and in the tobacco plantations of Virginia. So uh, the establishment has created this misnomer of indentured servitude to explain away and minimize the fact of white slavery. But uh, if you really read even the establishment historians, if you read their footnotes, uh, even they have to concede at the very least in the 17th century that uh, black slavery was almost non-existent and that uh, whites were the overwhelming majority of slaves in America in the 17th century. Where does the word slave itself come from? Isn't it exclusively in reference to the exper experience of black people in bondage? Uh, no, it isn't, Pastor Peters. Uh, actually, the word slave derives from the white nation of people known as the Slavs or the Slavic people. And uh, they were enslaved longer than the entire history of the United States. Uh, the Slavic people were slaves about twice as long as blacks were slaves in North America. So the actual definition of that word pertains to the experience of white people in bondage, yet the politically correct historians tell us that we're not allowed to refer to whites as slaves. So it's uh, really a huckster's game that's at work there. It's that old wordsmith game, isn't it? That's correct. How did the enslavement of whites in America begin, anyway? Well, uh, the enslavement of whites in America uh, really actually has its roots in Great Britain because uh, it's, a, uh, it's really a very complex story. Of course, 
the history of whites in bondage goes all the way back to the ancient world. The ancient Greeks and the ancient Romans, of course, held slaves, and the majority of those slaves were white. This has pretty much been the essential experience of all people uh, throughout time, and it's ludicrous to say that it's uh, exclusively the experience of blacks. However, if we uh, bring this up to the American colonial period, we must go to Britain because, of course, America was a colony of Britain. And Britain began its decline in the 16th century, uh, shortly after the reign of Henry VIII. Uh, it really, I would say, it went into decline under his son, the very weak boy king, Edward VI. And in the era of Edward VI, uh, we see that uh, usury, or the charging of interest on loans, that had been illegal in, in Britain. And uh, during the reign of Edward VI, he was being manipulated by his counselors, and that's when usury was legalized in Britain in 1548. And from that point onward, you also had the beginnings of the enclosure laws, which was the taking away of the right of the English people to farm freely in these common lands which had existed. They were basically swindled out of their land. And uh, from that, you had a pauperization process beginning. You had the first real beginnings of a class of white people in Great Britain known as paupers. And uh, once you had that, of course, you had all the social evils that came along with the paupers. Now, pauperization began uh, in a large-scale way under Queen Elizabeth I, and this way had the first welfare their law in Britain being passed when people had formerly been yeomen who had been who had been free men. Now there's of, of white slaves in early Britain known as the villains, from which from which we get the disparaging term of villain. It All right, now we're going to get into it. So you heard Michael Hoffman, and this is actually my video. So Michael Hoffman mentioned that the so-called slough, the word slave itself, come from the word the word slave itself come from the word slough. Now we done been over this, you know, if you if, if you fuck with me, you know I've been over this shit about a hundred times, but just for the purpose of this education that we trying to present and this demonstration, we are going to present it once again, right? So we see slave a noun. It's person chattel property of another from old French, da da da. We go down. It's saying originally. I like to go down right here where it says originally. Originally, slough in quotation, it say C slough, right? So, so used in the secondary sense because of the many slouts sold into slavery by conquering people. Now, if you heard what Hoffman just said, he pretty much said the same exact thing of what the etymology, right? This is the etymology dictionary. This is not A1 personal dictionary. A1 did not make this dictionary. A1 didn't publish or present any documentation on this dictionary. So according to what we've been told a slave is, right? We've been told that we are the only slaves. And even when it come to white people here in America, that they was indentured servants. When in reality, they are the only slaves, right? Now you add that to the history, right? Now let me let me go to something real quick, cause I this is what I wanted to start with, right? And I want you guys to remember that this is the narrative that they paint to us throughout our history, right? So I'm gonna mute my mic real quick. No, I'm gonna unmute it real quick until I'm done. All right, so I'm gonna go back. And we're gonna play, I'm gonna play a little bit. So hopefully, I don't get flagged. I, actually, fair use. So you know, before I use, you. I will put out fair use. Um. So remember narrative, and this is fair use, okay? So fair use. So.
Shout out to everybody in the building. Shout out to the building. Center Street North, the divide line, the racial dividing line of Birmingham, Alabama. We are passing the home of Arthur Shores, whose home was bombed three different times uh, during the 60s. Jeff Drew cannot forget what life was like living in the segregated South of the 1960s. And I was laying on the floor watching uh, the TV, and the next moment, me and the TV are at the ceiling. It had literally blown us both off the floor. And I had my first taste of what a dynamite blast felt like. Drew's family wasn't welcome in an all-white neighborhood. Determined to stay, his father took action to protect his family from hate groups. And that wall was built to stop the bullets and the dynamite that the Klan would shoot and uh, throw. Frankie Adams Johnson grew up in Mississippi, surrounded by symbols of racial segregation. Whites were privileged, blacks were the underprivileged, and, and we lived with signs of symbols of, of, of uh, segregation, whites here, blacks here. You've got to keep the white and the black separate. Fifty years ago, Birmingham was known as the most segregated city in the South. An example was here at the Lyric Theater. White customers could go through this entrance, while black customers had to go around the corner to a back alley entrance that was marked colored only. Many Southern communities passed laws to separate blacks and whites in schools, restaurants, and many other public places. Congressman John Lewis, who grew up in rural Alabama, says he tasted the bitter f I didn't like it. I saw those signs that said white men, colored men, white women, colored women, white waiting, colored waiting. Resisted any move to rid itself of racism. Hollis Watkins from Mississippi remembers some of the unwritten rules. If you are walking down the sidewalk and you meet white people, you step off the side and bow your head until they pass. Because if you didn't, it could be considered disrespectful. They might kick you, beat you, or put you in jail. I'm not for integration. I'm for segregation segregation and I will be until I die. Segregation now, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. In June 1963, Alabama Governor George Wallace blocked two African Americans from enrolling at the all-white University of Alabama. After federal marshals and the National Guard stepped in, Wallace stepped aside. For his daughter Peggy, it was a painful memory. It stained Alabama, of course, but it stained him for the rest of his life. We have a right to expect that the Negro community will be responsible, will uphold the law, but they have a right to expect that the law will be fair, that the Constitution will be colorblind. The symbols of racial segregation in the South started disappearing after the passage of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. President Johnson affixes his signature, giving millions of African Americans the same freedoms and liberties enjoyed by the country's then predominantly white population. Chris Simpkins, VOA News, Birmingham, Alabama. Let me know if I'm still echoing um, AP. I still got an echo on my um, mic. Nah, you good. Nah, you, you good. good. You good, bro. All right, so I got the echo. I got the echo. I'm the one that got the echo. Well, that's all good. Um, so keep that in mind right there, right? That's just a brief glimpse of what we've been told, what we've been taught throughout our history, that we was um inferior to the European, that the European treated us. Uh, unfairly, um, we go right here to. Uh, so hold on a second. Uh, we can go right here to the history of lynchings, right? Go here, lynchings in America, and we gonna 
go down. Let me see where I was at. All right, this is what I wanted to read right here. All right, it's saying the South, an estimated two or three blacks were lynched every week in the late 1900 and early 16th, uh, early early 20th century. Now think about this, right? Now think of the hate that they get showed you that happened in Birmingham, Mississippi, right? Think of the hate that they get showed you, right? So this hate couldn't been going on from night from 1619 all the way into 1865. It's impossible that this hate was was going on like that. If white people hate, why is all the lynchings and the and look look what it says? I'm gonna highlight it for you guys and just visualize this, right? It says in the South, an estimated two or three blacks were lynched each week. In the late 19th and early 20th century, in Mississippi alone, 500 blacks was lynched from 1800s to 1955 nationwide. The figures climbed to nearly 5,000. Now, why is the date from 1900 to um, the early, the late 1900s to the, tw the early 20th century, right? Why is the dates like that, right? If they wanted things to be segregated, they would have terrorized us from the time we got here, which that's part of the story that they tell you what we're going to find out otherwise right so let me go ahead let me see i'm gonna come back to the white slavery all right so now i think it's this one let me go ahead all right so we got this 10 black slave owners that will tear apart historical perceptions right Oh, excuse me, that's my phone. That would tear apart historical perceptions, right? So let's go through it, right? William Ellison, um, which is definitely my favorite um, slave owner. But as you're going to see later on in the Negro slave owners, there's Negroes who own up until like 150 slaves, according to the documentation that we see within the black slave owners um, manual, right? So we got William Ellison. We already know now. Look, so the, um, the, Adam, the antebellum era of American history saw the number of people of color archive mark success in business. Indeed, from the end of the 18th century, right? From the end of the 18th century, um, right through the start of the Civil War in 1861, several former slaves. Now, look, several former slaves. This is what they always try to hit you with. All, everybody who owned the slave was was a slave prior to that. They never saying that these people was free people. They never saying none of this shit. They just give you the um fact and the understanding that these people was considered to be these people were slaves formerly before they got into the same um, how do you say um economical system because understand this right the people that's working for you just like right now you got a business you have to have employees or you're going to be like a sole proprietor right or sole proprietorship right so you like llc's and corporations extend once you get employees once you have i believe a number employee i don't i don't know the the, the actual number but um i think it's more than two you and someone else that's working um, you know, that's when you start getting all into like the corporations and like the um limited liability corporations or the LLPs. Um, so you know, however it go, right? So now they always hit you with the, all of these people was always former slaves, right? But even though at the time we seeing free slave, we seeing free people, and we know that there's free people who was never enslaved, right? It said became an entrepreneur. None none more than William Ellison Jr. Indeed, in the beginning of the Civil War, he had grown to become one of the most successful businessmen of all of all of South Carolina. Now listen, <laughs> how is a Negro? Check this out. Now look, this is what I was telling this clown, right? I ain't gonna mention his name because he's irrelevant. But I was telling this clown right here, right? How did a slave, right, with all of the racial violence that we just seen, the lynchings and all this other stuff, right? How was he able to become one of the most, now I ain't saying one of the most successful 
um Negroes, saying I'm one of the most successful businessmen in all of South Carolina, right? Here we go. Despite being a mulatto as well as owning a considerable amount of land, he also held dozens of slaves by the time no by the time of his death. So did so how did a slave get to become a, such a, pr pr a, a, pr a pr permanent permanent figure in the southern society right so think about that let that just marinate right we don't need to even go down um but one thing let me see something real quick is this the same article uh, i think this is let me see something real quick because they use the term of man your mission they said that after his slave owner died he was a man you minute, right? Meaning that slave owners released him at the time of his death, right? But nonetheless, let's let's continue. Let's go through it, right? I don't know why this picture ain't coming up. Maybe she ain't got no um, picture. So you got Dowsey Pope, right? You go another Negro. We're gonna read. Not every person of color who owned slaves did so for business reasons in fact many did so for sentimental reasons in several states why a slave was permitted to buy their own freedom right now i say in several states a slave was permitted to buy their own freedom right now ask yourself this question right if a slave worked from sun up to sundown and the master who owned them wasn't paying them then where the fuck did he get the money from and I'm quite sure that the way that we told these stories, right? Because you got to kind of decipher them, cross-reference, and critical think this shit. You can't just because it's saying that, oh, slaves was um, um, permitted to buy their own freedom. We can't sit there and believe that. Because there's something else going on in a lot of these cases. A lot of these cases, a lot of these people are under entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurship, okay? And at a certain age, they was free from, from being... Um, no, I'm sorry, not entrepreneur, but being a, um, what is that called? Um, what's the shit called when a person work up under you? Um, God damn, I can't even think right now. Um, an apprentice, sorry, an apprentice, right? So a lot of these cases, they said that a lot of these people was apprentice. And after a certain age, they was free from their apprenticeship and they was able to do like what William Ellison did. Right now, a lot of times these apprenticeships is part of your own family, and you're able to expand or continue the family business, right? But nonetheless, though, it says Disney Pope, it says she was permitted. I mean, well, it say slaves in several states was permitted to buy their own freedom. It said once they had earned it, they were there were strict rules in place designated to discourage the newly free slaves from setting others free. It said for their for their part, owners who freed slaves were often required to send them to other states. Meanwhile, the free slaves themselves were not only required to move the states, but they must also be barred from purchasing their their loved ones' freedom, right? Now that's bullshit because in a lot of cases they say that um once a person got free they was able to work and they was able to buy their own they buy, buy their family freedom right nonetheless though let's continue right so now we got nate um nate nate through nate through um butler sorry nathaniel butler he's saying not all slave owners of colors purchase slaves in order to keep their family un um um united however nat butler they go another turn with Nat, right? Now check this out. Nat Butler, right? Look at this. I'm just I'm gonna come back to this. I just want to show you this right here, right? Uh, how the term the, the the word Nat was actually required to be used for um, Aborigines, right? April, Robin, etc. Right? There's a lot of different names, right? So Augusta County, Virginia, nineteen uh, August nineteen um, seventeen seventy seven, right? It said Nat. An Indian boy in the custody of Mary Greeley, who detained him, I mean, who detains him as a slave, complains that he is held in an unlawful slavery slavery commission to take deposit to take deposit in the Carolinas or elsewhere. 
I'm sorry, yo, my fucking cat just walked over here. So she took my fucking attention away from what I was doing. It said, on the complaint of Nat, an Indian or musty boy who says he is to be set free from the service of Mary Greeley, nothing appears to be to, to this court but a bail, a bill of sale for 10 pounds from one Sherwood, Harris, or Grantville County, North Carolina. All right. So they give you a couple of different um, scenar um, scenarios where so-called Aborigines is being called Nat. You know, a lot of people like to reference Nat Turner, and um, a lot of people know that Nat Turner, I believe he was a Pumonkey, Pumonkey or Powhatan um, descendants of the Aborigines there. But, you know, that's a whole other story, right? But let's go back into this one right here, right? So, all right, Nathaniel Butler, right? So he also owned, he also was a slave owner, actually in Maryland, right? I'm just going to glim through some of this shit because I have a lot of um shit that I have to go over. So I can't read this whole shit right now, especially this fucking cat just walking back and forth and shit. All right, so we got the, the Pendarvis family, right? It's saying, for a white planta plantation owner to take a female slave as a mistress was hardly unique in the 18th century America, right? Now, check this out, right? I'm going to tell you like this, right? When you got Walter Plecker and all of these racial um, integrity laws, right? That's basically or uh, racial, yeah, racial, racial integrity laws that was basically based upon mis 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 misogynation, right? So, if Europeans was doing this to the black women or to the aboriginal women, right, they wouldn't have created that law. They created that law because of the picture that I just showed you that was part of um, Michael Hoffman demonstration of what he was explaining to the the joker who was interviewing where well, you see the negro with the top hat and you see the european in the back this is where most of these cases came from you know and and actually you know i mentioned this before right they this shit pretty went pretty much went all the way up until they made made the um the man act which um the fucking boxer jack johnson Cause, you know Jack Johnson was riding around and I don't know if them was called Rolls Royces or whatever kind of luxury cars that we built I ain't gonna say they was Rolls Royces but they was some type of luxury cars at that point in time um but however it go he used to be riding from state to state picking up women and not picking them up like they prostitutes which probably some of them was prostitutes I don't know but however it go you know because he was a famous individual you know he had clout like that or what Kevin Samuels considered to be a high-value male. So at that point in time, he would have been a high-value male, beating up all the Europeans, got money, plus he's an inventor, plus he's a mechanic, plus he has other skills to make him or give him that title deemed as a high-value individual. He's riding around with five and six Europeans in the car at one time. They created the Man Act. The Man Act is when you read the Man Act, you'll see it's dealing really with um human trafficking and anti misogynation laws. So that shit went all the way up until the when Jack Johnson, but previous to that, they had started to try to implement the interracial because in a lot of cases, right? A lot of cases. And I'm gonna just go to here real quick. Check this out. A lot of people, you know, they don't know the, how important this book is, but this book is very important. You know what I'm saying? Um, let me get to the top of it. Hold up real quick. Just bear with me, y'all. All I'm a little rusty, but, you know, you know how the shit go. I'm looking for one thing in my head. kind of... Bring you guys home with what I'm saying. Just do me one favor, people. Hit that like button for me. All right, it's right here. This is what I like to um, fuck with this part right here. And like I said, it's a lot of things in this book. 
that I don't agree with, you know, um, but some of the stuff that he does mention is kind of like, you could kind of like, you know, um, find resources that basically supports what we're talking about. Because my theory of what's going on, let me say, uh, according, other than what the European telling us, there's no actual story that I've heard anybody say that pretty much highlights um, or how some black people were saved. Some people saying that these are Africans. Some people, no, 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 they're not Africans. These are mulatto. And like I said, the one, the the um, the joint that I just came that I just came off of the one talking about Nat, the musty boy who was an Indian. In a lot of these cases, it's because of the fact that the father impregnated a Slavic woman and the Slavic woman produced mulattoes or mixed children. Okay? These mixed children, if they wasn't a manumission by the father, they will be deemed slaves as well. This is the 18, no, I'm sorry, sorry, um, the 16, I believe, 76 law that they made, um, the condition of the mother, the condition of the children, and that came as a result of, like, the Bacon Rebellion story, and as a result that a lot of these Negroes, or these Aborigine men, was impregnating a lot of these Slavic women, right, so now we read. The census record shows that the majority of Negro owners of slaves were such from a point of view of philanthropy. Now, I mean, just kind of like Bob and Weave that one, right? It's saying in many instances, the husband purchased the wife or vice versa. Okay, now, the husband purchased the wife. Okay, now, we already kind of can kind of connect to that. The image I just showed you. With the individual, with the Negro, with the top hat on, more likely he purchases that he perch he purchases that um that Slavic woman, cause a lot of times you can buy the Slavic women and free her, but then she will become your wife. Then she will become your wife. When I check this shit out, right? It says um, all right. In other instances, the husband purchased the wife, or vice versa. The slave belong belonging to such families were few were few compared with the large number. Numbers found among the whites on the well-developed plantations, right? Slaves of Negroes were in cases where in some cases the children of a free father who had purchased his wife. If he did not dare after emancipate the mother as so many such husbands fell to do, his own children was born a slave and thus Thus reported by the enumerators, right? Now, there's another segment in here. Let me see something. All right, boom, check this out. Listen to this right here, right? All right, some of these husbands were not anxious to liberate their wives immediately. They considered it advisable to put them on probation for a few years. And if they did not find them satisfactory, they would sell their wives as other slaveholders dispose of Negroes. Now, understand what's going on. Carter G. Woodson got documentation, but some of this documentation is kind of hearsay or it's a hypothesis according to what he already been told at that point in time, right? It said, for example, a Negro shoemaker in Charleston, South Carolina, purchase his wife for seven hundred dollars right look boom for seven hundred dollars but on finding her hard to please right finding her hard to please he sold her a few months thereafter for seven hundred and fifty dollars gaining so he made a, a fifty dollar profit right <laughs> it's a gaining fifty dollars by this transaction so even when you get to that, they talking about uh, how, you know, um, you know how he was um, flipping, basically flipped. They he basically he ain't flip his wife, but he sold her and gained the profit from her, right? But like I said, in a lot of these cases, I mean, most of these cases, these was Europeans. Now I understand this too, right? Now, like I said, if a lot of times these children wasn't free, 
they would have looked just like us. Some of them would have looked just like us. Some of them would have been, um, you know, what we deem to be mulatto, maybe lighter skin, maybe dark skin, maybe light brown skin, etc. right? These, they would have came in all these different variations of brown, right? So, it wouldn't be outside of the line to understand why some Negroes was enslaved. Because their mother was a Slavic, or their mother would, would have been what we deem a so-called slave, right? All right, so let's go back. Let's jump back into something real quick. We're going to go back into this. All right, so. Um, all right, boom, check this out. All right, so the, the um, Pendarvis family, right? So it's saying, fact, Jane Pendarvis. The el the oldest son of Joseph inherited a hundred I mean one thousand and nine acres of land close to Green Savannah. He wa he was also bequeathed on a plantation in a nearby Charleston Creek. Moreover, according to the record the record books of the time, James inherited a hundred and thirteen slaves to work his land now look to work his land right what does that sound like right now if you have a farm you got you could maintain a small farm but once you start you got a, a, a 1,900 acres of land and I'm not saying that the whole 1,900 acres was all farm or all a plantation but you can pretty much sum it up to how even if it was a hundred fucking acres even if it was three acres nigga Right, a lot of a lot of the things the same itself. Wasn't plantation, plantation, cattle, livestock, livestock, extra born area, born area, wood, shit, probably whatever you probably whatever you needed. No doubt, and see, and also when you cross reference this back to the um great law of peace, right? And it's gonna be summing it up because I'm gonna kind of probably jump around, right? Even when you get into the great law of peace, right? Even when you get in here, hold up. I'm looking for a particular part. I think it's this one. No, I might be the one at the top right here. Hold up for a second. 58 it's 57 my bad y'all like I told you I'm a little rusty so a lot of my documents I haven't reviewed in years so um some of them I gotta kind of go back over um but nonetheless though, I'm gonna find it though but in the great law of peace it says that no foreigners can own land period period right and even in this one, saying all chiefs of persons who submit to laws of a foreign people are alienated and forfeit all claims of the Iroquois Confederate nations, right? So even when you get into this, it kind of like, I'm looking for the particular, because there's a particular part in here where it says that no foreigner can own land, period, period. Ain't no, no foreigner can own land in no aboriginal um, land or the Atans, the lands of the Atanshans, right? But let's go back. Where the fuck was I? All right, I was right here. All right, so he inherited 113 slaves to do to work this land. Now I ain't saying like that. Don't sound like that's benevolent or sound like that has cruel intentions of 113 workers to work your corporation, right? Making him the largest nine non-white i guess non-white slaveholder it's a non non-wild non-white slaveholder in all of south carolina james carried on growing his business interests and so by this time of his death in 1798 the pendant darvish family now this is 1798 now this ain't even this is way before um 18 um 30 it's like what 32 years before 1830 before we even get into the slave manual book right so in 18 no i'm sorry he died in in 1798 they ain't saying how old he was let me see 
Uh, it's not giving me a um, estimate date, but I'm quite sure I can find a Penn Darvish family in um, Charles um, um, Wesley and Wilson book, right? So how did it go? He's saying he went on. He's saying um, he carried the growing growing his business interests, and so by the time of his death in 1798, the Penn Darvish family owned 150 slaves, 55 slaves making the majority of them picking cotton or rice. Picking cotton or rice, right? So now, 150 slaves, right? Which people will make you think, oh, shit, these are Negroes. It's just a lot of shit going on around this time. It's too much shit going on. And it's too much evidence that even in South Carolina, that a lot of them people down there in the South that was racist or that was bigots they came from these ass their ancestors were slaves that's the reason what made them hate or had the, for them to have that aggression towards us in the south right but a lot of people oh these are negroes these so negroes were slaves and then negroes was able to own slaves let's let's try to make some sense of that and let's try to also make some sense to why they don't never put none of this shit in none of this history just like how Michael Hoffman said, well, in the 1700s, now he said in the 1700s, all of the Europeans were slaves. Now, he said it was a few so-called Negro slaves. Now, put into put in the fact that some of these Negro slaves are slaves due to their mothers who were Slavics. And that's the, how they, and that's how they got into the, the um, condition because of that, because a lot of times, like you said, if the father did not emanate the children, they would be their slaves. Now think about that. Now understand that, right? So if you own a plantation, right, and according to the laws of the land, right, um, and you impregnated one of these Slavic women. Now the children from the Slavic women. This is a lot of cases why you see. You know, they be making these slave movies and they be having these mulatto children and not be his daughter, but she's still a slave. And then she mad at the father because the father never freed him. But the father, but they get put in the, the father's a white person and then put in the slave as a Negro, which the slave would have still been a Negro, but the slave owner would have been a Negro too. In that case, if he didn't free his own children, then they would have became slaves as well. So a lot of times you see in these stories where they putting white people as a slave on us, that's fucking bullshit. That's bullshit. Most of the interracial, well, all of the interracial um, marriages was even, some some cases, these are mulatto men who marrying Negro women or marrying what we call Aborigine women. But it's because they are Aborigine too in some cases. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of these cases, so many different cases that you got to kind of like cross-reference the research, cross-reference the information with what you got and what they're giving you too because they're not giving you everything. But let's continue, right? All right, so this is James Pendarvis, right? So he owned 155 slaves, right? So Justice Angel, right? It's saying men and women of color owning slaves were not so uncommon even in the 18th century, South Carolina. Now, remember, I'm about to, we're going to go into this, right? In the 18th century, South Carolina. However, in most cases, they would own just one, two or three slaves, often family members, which is what makes the case of Justice Angel so noticeable. In the 1830, Carl Carleton County, the part of the state where Charleston now lies, it's saying he was deemed a slave magnet, magnate. Not only did he own dozens of slaves himself, he also traded them, earning him a fortune as the, the, as the expense of others more unfortunate souls. More, more, more unfortunate souls, sorry about that. So we can see some of the stuff that was going on. Nick Rose was trading slaves. Right, so this is, I think this is a sister right here from um, Louisiana, right? Let me get into her, all right. So we got Mary Thuris Montoya, Montoya, right? 
So Mary was born into slavery, but died a rich woman. Now, in most of these cases, we're saying that these people, they don't have no problem with telling you that you are a fucking slave. They have no problem. Everybody, when we see Sarah Rector, oh, her family was previous slaves. Now she own, Now she's the richest person. Get the fuck out of here, money grip. This shit just doesn't make sense. And you can't believe all of their narrative. Now, I'm not saying in some of these articles it's not going to kind of like... It's, it's 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 not going to um I'm trying to find a word. Like sometimes you read these articles, you have to be smart. You have to know other um historical facts. So you can't fall victim to the shit that's being presented to you. Because you might read the article and it might just be talking like I'm like I'm reading this right now, right? I might read this and be like, oh shit, yeah, they since they talk about black slave owners, then this then the other stuff, everything in this article has to be factual. Nah, money grip. Because it's still coming from a mind of a person who don't want you to know that blacks own white slaves. And that's the whole narrative of what they're not telling us. Oh, blacks could own, it could be millions, thousands of black slave owners. They could own as many Negroes as they want, but they can't own white slaves, which is fucking bullshit, right? But nonetheless, let's continue, right? So she was born a slave, right? She was born a slave. Now, remember, the narrative that we get from um, Roots and some of these other slave narratives, right, is that these people treated you unhumanely. So why the fuck would they release you, and then and they would they would release you from being a slave, and then this person who ain't got no, who don't have no education, who don't know nothing about um commerce or nothing about business, or is able to just become a rich woman, and we see this in a, too many cases. This is too many cases. What I'm reading right now is just ten of hundreds of thousands of Negroes who own slaves, right? But check it out, right? It says, all right, so Mary, right, um, born in slavery, died a rich woman, right? It's saying, and a rich woman with slaves of her own to boot. In fact, at the turn of the 18th century, Mary was one of the richest ladies in Louisiana, right? Now, remember, the 18th century, right? Look up when the Louisiana Purchase took place, right? According to them, right? Which they're lying about that too, right? So, in Louisiana, so she was one of the richest ladies in Louisiana. As a free lady, she was an astute entrepreneur as well as a social climber. Moreover, she was a Christian-minded, look, they had to throw that in there, right? She was a Christian-minded and worked to improve the society she lived in. Even if she did not, even if she did make us a slave laborer, so how did this lady, born to slaves, earn first, first her freedom and then her fortune, right? So let's go down a little bit. Let's see this. All right, so I said Mary was actually born coin, coin, coin. What the fuck is that? Coin, 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 coin. Right here, coin, coin. I ain't never seen that word before. Born coin, coin with no given surname, right? So now she ain't had no surname according to what they're saying, right? In Louisiana, French outposts of the Nat, the Nat shit. T, the Natchez. Well, I know that this is the Nat, the Natchez, and the Natchez, right? Now I say the French outposts of the Natchez, right? Which the Natchez are is a is an Aboriginal tribe that was in Louisiana, right? But that's really they pronounce it as this and as Natchez and as Natchez is. I've seen it with Z's, S's, etc., right? But you guys understand, right? So the French outposts. In the area where the Natchez was at? Really? Okay. All right. While she was born into slavery, she did not, she did have some education as a child. Being trained in, in nursing and then, then pharmacy skills that she would be able to put to good use later. So wait a minute. So wait a minute, right? They telling us that, you know, slaves wasn't educated, but then all of these Negroes, right? Because it, it's not just... It's not just these 10 right here, right? It's it's the thousands of them, right? Look, check this out. I'm sorry, hold up. All 
All right, so look, this is what I was showing somebody the other um couple weeks ago, right? So now look, we at Louisiana, right? <clears throat> and I'm actually going to look for her name too while we in here. Let me see something real quick. Let's go back into this. All right, Montaya. All right, so. Let me hide this. Let me see one more thing. Let me see if I can find her actual county. All it says is Louisiana. It don't say actual county. All right, so it don't give me a county, but we could run through a little bit of shit anyway, right? So here, we in Louisiana, right? So they give you, in that so-called article, they give you the impression, right, that um, Mary was a um, an exception to the rule. She was a Negro who was educated, and she she was trained to be a nurse and to be a pharmacist, right? Which we know far we know up into the Rockefeller medical industry everything was homo everything was holistic so even pharmacy at that point in time every this is where you get your snake oil salesmen and all of this stuff that they be saying but a lot of these are some some mystic practices even among people who wear suits and ties and have businesses we still took herbs we we still made concoctions we still made um policy policy to put over um cuts and snake bites and um insect bites to pull out the venom and all of this stuff right but check it out though right so now we're in louisiana right so boom this is one page right Matter of fact, you know what? I'm gonna do something on here real quick. So we go down right here. I'm gonna go to the ones that own more than 20 slaves. So we got 20, 46, 21, 44 right here, right? We got 35. These are people who own over 20 slaves, right? Now, you got in some cases, you do see one. You see, you know, one all the way up to a hundred or something, right? In this case right here, we see that this individual owned 59 slaves. This individual right here owned 40 slaves. This individual owned 70 slaves. This individual owned 60 slaves, right? Now look, these individual 25, 54, 54, 20, 49, 52, 38, right? Now, look. This is the second page of Louisiana, right? Let's continue. go down some more. <clears throat> so, we see 52. We see 69 right here at the bottom right here. Ver Verant pol Pollen. Own 69 slaves. Okay. That's we still in Louisiana, y'all. Look, this is actually the fourth page. See these numbers is kinda kinda um stiff on that page right there. But let's go down. Still in Louisiana, y'all. Thirty-two. Look, still in Louisiana, y'all. So you think Mary was actually an exception to the rule with all these motherfucking Negro slave owners I'm showing you? And a lot of times, a lot of these people are employees. Now, you will be out of your mind, right? Because even when you get into the, the conversation that we had a couple of couple weeks ago, right? Just showing and proving on some things, right? And just trying to make actual sense of all this fucking rhetoric and this false historical um, education that we've been taught, even through the general education system, right? So look, they give you, they give you the notion. And like I said, look, I do not, I am not pro-slavery of any human being. Everybody should be free, um, especially children. So I'm not up here making no fun of this European child who maybe was in bondage or maybe just an employee. So that they can eat 
and have a place to um, sleep and you know what I'm saying and have a place to stay at right so look Charles a slave boy from New Orleans a slave boy from New Orleans right now look let me see something real quick I think this I can't see the bottom of that shit look well this is in Virginia I didn't even go through Virginia yet this is a Virginia slave child look this is let me see where the fuck this at St. Lawrence is not giving me an actual oh this is Virginia alright so more slave more slave children from New Orleans right now they try to give you this this clown, I ain't gonna mention his name again. He gonna say Rebecca, right? I think this is Rebecca, cause this will be the first one. This is Charlie and this is Rosa, right? That Rebecca was a mulatto, right? That's the reason why she was held as a slave, right? In some cases that may be the case, right? But in other cases it may be the case that, you know, that these are just slobs and they was enslaved too. But in some cases, boom, when they saying that they held family members, these are some of the family members that they held. If that's that's just another perspective, right? In some cases, the the so-called Negro slave owner or Negro master, like we just read, a couple of them, right? They took on these European wives. They had these European or these mulatto children in some cases, right? And in some cases, these are the images, but these are also images of slaves, period. So they, they could be white. They could be slaves as, as white people who don't have any intermixing with aboriginal um, people, right? Or they can be mulattoes who look white, who, who do have ancestors of aborigine, um, um, have aborigine ancestors. So it could be both ways. But just know that it's not as a result of a European slave owner um, impregnating a Negro slave, a uh, Negro slave, and creating these children like they've been, like they taught us in history, right? So look, so this is just a couple of cases, right? Let's go ahead, let's go back. So we're still in Virginia, right? Still in Virginia. I think this is probably the sixth page, if I'm not, if I'm sure, right? Um, go down another another page dealing with Louisiana. And remember, these supposed to be all Negroes, okay? And and, and and I'm gonna tell you something like this, right? It's just so funny, right? Because a lot of these Negroes in here got French names, right? They got French names, right? In a lot of these cases, right? Some of them got French names, right? So you know that can be a whole another that could be a whole nother conversation just dealing with louisiana period right and a lot of these people in a lot of cases did speak creole right but nonetheless so let's continue right so we still on we still in louisiana right so what would be the likelihood that all these negro slave owners right all these negroes that i'm going through was i don't care if they own one to fucking a hundred slaves right and what would be the case that some of these, well, if not half of the cases was all dealing with Slavics, okay, was dealing with white slavery. In a lot of these cases, these are not Negro slaves. And I don't care what's in the book, I'm putting two and two together. I'm not using um, Carter G. Woodson's entire book to substantiate my claim. I'm using claims that I cross reference from other material of stuff that just doesn't make no fucking sense. Because you got. So we got one. Uh, hold up. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. We got, um. We got a presentation coming up from Chief Holiday, I believe AP. Uh, um. I believe I'm part of that as well, right? I'm going to let AP, AP. Yo. I don't even know where the fuck AP at. 
AP, I'm gonna drop the link back in the chat room just in case you wanna come back in. I'm gonna let AP promote the live stream that's coming up. So let me put this back in the chat room. So I'm cherry picking, right? No, I'm not cherry picking. You niggas is slow. That's what the fucking problem is. You niggas is fucking slow as hell, bro. It's like, you know, you like these people give you information, right? So. All right. So let me go back. Let's go. Let's 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 go back to the basics real quick. Because I see that motherfuckers ain't never going to get this shit right. So we just went over Michael Hoffman. Michael Hoffman just said that in the 1700s, there was most of the slaves was Europeans, right? Um, more to the I, I want to say the 80 percentile of slaves in the 1700s was Europeans, right? So we deal with the term slave or slave, right? See slough, so you secondary because of the many slouts sold into slavery by conquering people, right? So then here, we go ahead, boom, let's go. Let's look up what a slough is before we even get into it, let me see. So it's a Slavs are the largest European analytic group. It's saying they speak the various Slavic languages belonging to the larger Baltic Slavic branch of the Indo-European languages. Slavs are ge um, geographically distributed throughout the northern Eurasia, mainly inhabiting central, eastern, and southern, um, e southeastern um, Europe. Hold up. This shit. A large Slavic uh, minority is also scattered across the Baltic states and Central Asia, while the substan sub substantial Slavic diaspora is found throughout the Americas as a result of immigration. Now, look, look. So we got Slav. So we have a. It says while a substantial Slavic diaspora is found throughout the Americas as a result of immigration. Do you really believe that? Or is it as a result of actual slaves being put into the condition that we just went over called slavery or slavery? Okay. Present day slaves are classified into East slaves, chiefly uh, Bel Asia, whatever, Russia, whatever, Ukrainian, West slaves, Czechs, um, Poles, Slavic, Serbs, South slaves are. Um, Colts, um, Macedonians, etc. Right? They said the vast majority of Slavs are traditionally Christians, right? I bet they are traditionally Christians because these are people who was converted, right? Um, however, modern Slavic nations or ethnic groups are considerably diverse, both ge gen genetically and cultural, and relations between them, even within individual groups, range from ethnic solidarity to mutual feelings and hostility right so when they go down here it gets into the Byzantine right it talks a little bit about the Byzantine um my fact you know what let me see something all right the reconstruction of the antonym um Slovenia is usually considered to um, considered a the derivation of Slavo word originally denoting people who speak the same language, meaning people who are under one another. In contrast, the Slav word denoting German people, namely meaning silent, mute, from Slavic, uh, whatever. All right, so y'all y'all get the picture, right? So look. So let's see what Slavic people look like. (laughs) 
So look, I mean, I ain't gotta pick. I ain't gotta pick all of them. You, you can see them. You can see them for your fucking self, right? These are Slavics, motherfuckers. And like, you know, this shit has been put out there. When so when I put up Slavic people and we go back to the term slave, which originally means Slav, right? We go back, we see that most of the Slavic nations are all Europe European nations. So that means that all Europeans are Slavs, with the exception to the ones cause like when you get into um um Sicily Rome and Greece and Italy and in Spain and in Portugal, you see that these people was these people in a lot of a lot of cases had um Moorish ancestors, right? And they say Moorish ancestors because them would have been the people or the Aboriginal people that was inhabiting them so called lands, what we call Iberia today, right? What we call Europe today, but formerly known as Iberia, right? So when I'm understanding that all of these motherfuckers are Slavics. All of them. Look, you can't tell a difference between a goddamn German and a fucking Polish person, right? You can't tell a goddamn difference between any of them. They're all the same fucking people. Now, we just, now, when I went through Wikipedia, it didn't, it didn't say all of these, it didn't say all of the European nations. It says most of them, right? But in cases, we know that the original people of Germany was Negroes. The original people of Britain was Negroes. The original people of the Port of Gaul, nigga, not Portugal, but Port of Gaul was Negroes, which the Port of Gaul was in Al Andalusia. And and Spain is is Spain is now um where Al Andalusia it used to be at, right? So we know that it was Negroes or Moors or whatever you want to call them inhabiting all them places. That's why a lot of cases they don't mention Britain, Germany, Italy, Rome, because they know that them places was inhabited by Negroes. They know that the Slavic people come from a particular region, right? So look, check this out. So according to them, all them Slavic the etymology of the word, right? You don't see no motherfucking that says the oldest written history of Slav can be shortly summarized by the Marid, the Marid and of slave hunts and the entrailment of the entire people. Do we need to look up what the word entrailment means? Let's look up that word. Because it's like, you know, when people be going through shit, they don't be identifying these terms. Give me one second, people. All right. So the enthral, enthralment, enthralment. Oh, I say enthralment, my bad. And enthralment, right? Enthral. So I say to um hold spellbind. That's the first definition. It's saying to hold in or reduce to slavery. So the entire people was held and reduced to slavery, right? It said the Slav was the most prized of all human with increased strength outside the marching land with origins hardened by the utmost against all privations, industrial content with little good humor, etc. He's saying he felt what? Where did he feel? He felt the what? He felt the slave markets of Europe Asia and Africa, right? It is most, I mean, it, it must be remembered for every Slavic slave who reached his destination, right? It said at least 10 succumbed to inhuman treatment during the transportation, right? Now check this out. Check this out. Let me blow this up a little bit. Alright, so let's say Britain, 3,000, I mean 300,000 white slaves in America. Now this is just a sum up of what they're saying, right? My bad, I was at a particular part that I wanted to see.
Alright, um, let me see. I think it's right here, my bad. All right, so slavery in America, typically associated with blacks from Africa, was an enterprise that began with the shipping, with begin with the what? With the shipping of more than 300,000 whites, Britons, to the colonies, right? The little known history. Now, why is this little known history? Why is it little known history? Because... As you find out, once this history come out, then the truth on this history going to come out. They can't even hold the, this history and say, that, oh, Europeans own European slaves. No, they have to, you have to factor in that it had to be Negroes. Because we, we, we look at Anthony Johnson, right? Now look, look at this, right? So it's saying it begun with the shipping of more than 300,000 white Britons to the colonies. This little known history, I wonder why it's little known history. Remember in the beginning, the general education system, they want you to be docile, right? The little known history is fascinating recounting in white cargo. 19, I mean, New, New York um, University Press 2007 drawing later diaries, ship manifests, court documents, and other government archives, right? It's in the following, the cultivation and 1613 of an acceptable acceptable um tobacco crop in virginia they needed the labor accelerated slavery was viewed as the cheapest and most expedient way of providing the necessary workforce due to harsh working conditions beating starvation um disease um survival rate of slaves rarely exceeded two years so they said they worked these people according to them i don't believe that shit needs because they they using the um disappearing act even on them to make you think that none of these people ancestors are um some of the individuals that are currently around today right they just died off and once they died off they said oh shit we gotta go find a, a much stronger race of people and this is when they start telling the lies about the african slave trade but even even in the 1600s, you find one of the first people who they deemed to be a goddamn slave um, that was brought here that they claim that began the slave trade. Now, they're saying 1613. Now, they're saying 1613. 300,000 white Britons to the colonies, right? All right, so through the hard conditions and thus the high level of demand was sustained by the continuous flow of white slaves from England, Ireland, and Scotland from 1618 to 1775 were imported to serve American colonist masters. So when when was they actually bringing Negroes here? Because we got Michael Hoffman clearly saying that um 1700s there was no black slaves, right? Now somebody make a preposterous statement like that, then you have to sit there and say, wait a minute. If this man would go through the limp, maybe he's saying that because maybe he don't want white people to be accountable for what happened to us. That could be agenda. Maybe he's saying this because it really did happen. It's the fucking truth. So you can create all these different speculations around it, but just make a mental note of it. Don't try to refute it or don't try to, um, try to debunk it if you don't have no resources to support it. Or with your personal feelings on what these people been saying. Remember, it starts off by saying this, right? This little known history, right? This little known history, right? Along with the little known history of so-called Negro slave owners, right? So-called Negro slave owners. But let's continue. Oh, so, uh, I'm looking for something that I, one thing that I was trying to find. All right, so it's not this one, it's this one. Now, they're saying American buried history of white slavery, right? Another another article is pretty much saying the same thing, right? America buried history of white slavery. Why would they bury this history and then only promote you as being a fucking slave? And all along, 
all along from 1619 all the way to 1865, they're not telling you that it was Negro slave owners, right? They're not telling you that. But only, but when they do tell you it was Negro slave owners, they get saying they making sure that they they interject the fact that these Negroes only own Negroes and they ain't own none of these 300,000 people that first came here in 1613 and was brought here from what date did that say? Sixteen eighteen to seventeen seventy five. So from sixteen eighteen to seventy seven seventeen seventy five, did no Negroes own no white slaves, but you find Negroes swirling with slave with slave. You find Negroes having white white. Right. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You find all of that, right, AP? Yo, AP. What do you, what say, you bro? say, bro? I said you find all of that. So from 1618 to 1775, no Negroes own white slaves. We don't need them to get to tell us that. We can sit here and figure this shit out on our own, our damn self. You understand what I'm saying? Like, like, like for people who say, "Oh, well, this this is not what this article saying." No, because I got multiple articles. I got massive research on this. I'm not taking everything I read in, in this shit verbatim. You have to kind of cross-reference the information um, from what you know and what you don't know along with what you already knew regarding to this so-called um, situation, right? So, look, it's saying these white slaves in the New World consisted of, of street children plucked from London, back alley, prostitutes and impoverished, impoverished um migrants searching for a brighter future which we already know how you gonna have a brighter future if you came here to be a slave and willingly willing to sign up for indentured servant to now when it comes to us right they always want to make the white people indentured servant to but in all actuality it's telling you right here slave originally slav right See Slav, so used in secondary sense because of the many Slavs sold into slavery by conquering people, right? Then we go as far as to see this, right? Whoa, Slavic people. We see that these are Europeans, right? But when it comes to them, they're indentured service, and when it comes to you, you're a Slav. But then go back to this right here. Understand this, right? What did it clearly say right here? This little known history it's fast is it's fascinatingly recounted in white cargo, right? So this little known history, right? But when it comes to them, they're the indentured servants. You was a slave, even though that a slave is a slav, originally slav, so used in a secondary sense because of the many slavs sold into slavery by conquering people, right? Then we say, all right, well damn, well you know what? Well, well I wanna know what slavy people look like, right? Bam. Look, look, and I ain't trying to be funny to none of the sisters here, right? One of these Negroes who be swirling with these Slavic women, seeing this, this Slavic woman right here, and probably said, God damn, she got a fat ass. And, and took her in the back and impregnated her. Or, or just, you know, did what they did, and as a, as a result of whatever they did, she got impregnated. There's some niggas in the chat room who are, who, are, who are swirling around with this woman right here today, and I'm not I'm not calling no names. Y'all could deny the y'all could deny it if y'all want for people who who not who don't roll like that. But I know for sure a lot of Negroes back in the day, if they had her, if she was a slave, these niggas would have been smashing that. And I, I'm just keeping it a buck. I'm not trying to be um. I'm not trying to be lewd. Most, Most of these, these pan Africans got a big thing with them every night. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Rumor has it that Negroes were slaves. Root word. Did they say root word be smashing them Slav? Shout out to my brother Root word too, man. Did they say he be slide, smashing them Slavic women? So you think if he... Smoke, 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 you see smoke in the chat room. <laughs> smoke, if you're in the chat room, man, tell me, man, would you smash this Slavic woman right here? I just picked up because she is pretty, but I don't like Slavic women. I like I like 
copper color women. Ain't nothing like a copper color woman. Can't no woman on the planet um duplicate. They can't I don't care how how they act or what they learn from us or how they learn our hand movements and how we move. Can't no woman on the planet contend with an Aboriginal woman or copper color Aboriginal or Tantan. So I'm gonna put that. I'm always I'm gonna always um put that out there, right? So these are Slavics, right? So you telling me some of these black slave owners wasn't smashing some of these Slavic women? Hey, they said hey, they, they doing they doing work work with Dennis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All of this shit is pseudoscience, brother. And like I said, even the, even a person who wrote who wrote this, this little known history is fascinatingly recounting recounted in white cargo. So this little known history, right? Why is it little known history? Why is this little known history? Why? Oh, let's go back here real quick, right? Let me see. Let's go back here real quick, right? In our dreams, we have limited resources, and the people yield themselves with perfect docility to our molding hands. So they molded two niggas' minds. So these niggas in the, the chat room told you, you cherry picks a nine, nigga. You a molded, you a doc, docile, molded, minded individual. That's the reason why you can't understand. And I'm not reading none of this shit verbatim. I'm only putting out claims, and I'm showing, I'm showing people how asinine their claims are. That we can't even believe them. Because even with all of that, right? Go back. Boom. Go back here. Ten, the, look, look, the wealthiest 10 black slave owners, right? right? Look, 10 black slave owners that, are tear, that, that will tear apart historical perceptions. Why? Why would it tear apart historical perceptions? Because now it's going to change the mind of an individual because remember what I showed you remember I showed you in the beginning like this right look this is the this is what we thought was going on the whole time bro look this shit right here is what we thought was Adam Mississippi surrounded by symbols of racial segregation whites were privileged blacks were down and privileged and, and we live sense of symbols of, of uh, segregation. Whites here, blacks here. All right, so how could this possibly be going on when we got evidence of this right here? Louisiana was one of the most racist states, right? <clears throat> According to them, right? And then look, even before I get to um, what's the name um. All right, so look, Virginia, right? Let's count how many pages in Virginia. So this is where Virginia starts at, right? At the Tennessee, right? Let me see how many was in Tennessee. Oh, this is South Carolina, but, but we'll get back to South Carolina. Right? So look, Virginia, right? The first page, right? So we're going to go one, two, Three, four, five, six. This nigga right here, Teller Benjamin, Benjamin O'Teller, he owned 71 slaves, right? What was that, six or seven? This is, I guess this is seven. So we still in Virginia, right? In the 1830s, all these Negroes owned slaves, right? So all these Negroes was documented as being slave owners, even though some of them owned anywhere between one to over a hundred, right? We still see that Negro 
Negroes was not being treated like they showed you in the early 1900s, being lynched, being chased with dogs, or being um, struck with fire hoses and all this other brutal shit that we just seen, right? So if Europeans was running shit, then how would they ever allow you to get into the same economical system as them? Oh, because you're going to read an article where they say, well, you know, some blacks was free and they was able to live in their own town. So why wasn't they running in the towns like they was doing in the early 1900s back then? Why? Why? And if they bought. And if they bought, according to them, this is their documentation, right? I mean, it's a couple of numbers that pretty much contradicts all this, right? But it says. Slavery in America typically associated with blacks from Africa was an enterprise that what? That begun with shipping more than 300,000 whites, Britons to the colonies. Okay? So they had it like that to bring all these Europeans here. I, mean, I don't know how many boats it would have took to bring all these people here, right? And, and bring Africans here at the same time. But then you get other you get other references that says the same shit, right? So let me see. So it's this one. It's this one right here. Let me see something. Uh, I think it's this one. Yeah, it is this one, right? So boom, check this out. <clears throat> it's called white servitude, right? The first slaves, right? Look. The first slaves that we hear of in North Carolina were white people and their Indian masters. And their masters was Indians. Right? Then you get other stories about Virginia and it tells you how some of these people um, look like this right here. Right? So it talk about... Um, I'm sorry. Stetchy, I guess that's how you pronounce it. It says, speaks of a story that he had from an Indian of an Indian chief, Ayanako, Ayanako, right? Who lived at Ritano, Ritano, I think that's, um, oh, I forgot the other fucking town that they always talk about was the first settlement. But nonetheless, though, right? Somewhere in the regions to the south of Virginia. It's saying, and he had sev seven whites who escaped out of the massacre at um, um, Renoke, Renoke, And they you they, no, and these he used to beat copper. My bad, let me open this shit up, man. This shit. All right, my bad. Let me, let me go back over that shit. All right, so... All right, so re read a note somewhere in the regions to the south of Virginia. And he had sev seven whites who who escaped out of the massacre at Ro Roanoke. And these he used to beat copper. So these motherfuckers was used not just to farm, but to um, mine precious metals. Which is something that, you know, Zachariah Stitchin talks about, about the people of the slave race that was created, the homunculus people. Now, I'm saying, like, look, okay, we know Stitchin has some out, some crazy ass, um, or his perceptions on his history is crazy. But one thing I can't connect, even when you get into the book of Inky and a little, he tells you that, oh, the Anunnaki came to this planet, they created these homunculus people, right? And these homunculus people was made to what do what? To to mine precious metals, right? The video I did two days ago, the young lady said that the um the Nephilim, the Nephilim came and impregnated the so called human race or the, the mankind race. Meaning only thing they, when they saying that, they talking about the Aborigines impregnating the Slavic women. Okay, and the case of the point when Zachariah Stitchin talks about the um, book of Inky in the Lil, and he talks about the people was created. I believe Europeans was created. I believe that this is a genetic um, experiment that took place, and this is the reason why we see ourselves in our current condition that we are in now, right? But nonetheless, though, right? These same people who they call Slavs, right? Which we know to be slaves, right? Which they said what? The in the entrailment, 
the the enthrall the enthrallment of the entire race. The enthrallment of the entire race, right? And they said that entire race dwell where? They say the entire race dwell where? They fill the slave markets of what? Europe, Asia, and Africa. Now, they don't put America in there, but we already know they was in America because they telling us. They telling us right here. <laughs> Slavery in America begin with the shipping of more than 300,000 whites. Okay? Now, let me see something because I have some more shit up here. America bury history. Now, why do these people keep on? They they seem like they're surprised that they never heard about this. Because I'm I know some of these people have um they got degrees and PhDs and um master degrees and all this shit. They never heard about none of this shit in school. I wonder why. Why wouldn't they tell us about any of this shit? Why? Why would they tell you? Because it would make them look inferior. That'll make them look inferior. And this right here, regardless of it, even if you think that these are Negroes who own Negro slave owners, they never teach you about anything of Negro slave owners because you know why? Because this would change the whole narrative to the history. Because remember what the history shows you. The history shows you this. This is what the history shows you. Fifty years ago, Birmingham was known as the most segregated city in the South. An example was their theater. White customers could go through this entrance, while black customers. White people. That if you were walking. Look, this shit right here. Now look. The sidewalk. Look, you see these Europeans and how mad they look and how evil they look. You think these people was practicing this whole shit from 1619 all the way to 1865? How? How? You tell me. Now, if they wasn't practicing, now I'm kind of, now I have to be more reluctant to say that we ran this shit. We ran this whole shit. These people ain't, these people ain't ever had you as no fucking slave until now. They got you under docility and they molded your mind to get you to accept to be what? A slave, right? Which is originally a slough, right? And the slouves was what? So used in a secondary sense because of the many slouves sold into slavery. Now remember, the ERY ain't nothing but a synonym, right? Is it a synonym? No, I'm sorry, a suffix. My bad. The ERY of slavery is nothing but a suffix. When you look up E R Y, but they changed it because now it would be um, the E means something. The E is actually to make it um, plural, and the R E is actually a condition. That means a continue a continuing condition of being held. The R E, so slavery. Okay, so the many slaves sold into slavery by conquering people, right? So and the in, the enthrallment enthrallment of the entire people the entire people so that would be the reason why we keep seeing these people like this right and that would also be the reason why we see the, see this right here right look at this they keep showing you rebecca right look and the, the the idiot the idiot that got six percent of the vote when he debated me, he always make these explanations for these Europeans and let these Europeans off the hook. That's why I talk greasy to a lot of these niggas, cause these niggas is not for us. I don't care if they do look like you. All skin folks ain't kin folks. I don't care how much information a nigga present, nigga. If you don't cross reference and learn the discern learn learn to have discernment to where you can decipher um 
cross reference and decode this information because we know it we know we have to decode it because even the Europeans right here right look look even them look even even that they shocked America's buried history of white slavery right let me go here this little known history right this little known history is fascin is a fascinatingly recounted in white cargo. So this little known history, right? This little known history, right? Oh, little, this is little known history, right? So 300,000 so-called whites was the first people being shipped to America. And then according to what um, Michael Hoffman said, that uh, in the 1700s, there was no black slaves. So where the fuck did they get the 1619 story from, right? And then also, when we go back down, right? <clears throat> We're already talked about Mary. We already talked about um, Justice, Justice um, Angel, right? We talked about William Ellison. Um, we have another brother right here, Antonio Dub Dub Bucklet, the Bucklet, right? Look, check this out. At the time of his death in 1887, Anto Antoine Antoine was a wealthy wealthy man. It's a, a very wealthy man, in fact. He was widely regarded as one of the richest men in the South. Richer even than his white neighbors. Not a coincidence, you fucking idiot. So, look. Remember. Look. Let me see something. Remember, these people hated you. They hated you, right? They hated you, right? So why the fuck would they let this man right here be one of the richest men? Look. Says one of the so we now we got two of the most richest the richest men in the South, right? William Ellison and Antoine Buckler. Oh, I bet you we find out that he was a slave at some point in time, right? But check this out, right? Richer than even his white neighbors. So these evil white people who was lynching you, who was um doing all this horrific shit, sicking dogs on you, who wanted you to stay um segregated and stay away from them, right? A black man who was neighbors to white people who lived in them and they, they went they didn't chase him out the neighborhood. Why didn't they chase him out the neighborhood like they was doing the people in the nineteen hundreds? Explain this one to me, right? So he was richer even than his white neighbors, so he lived among white people. So this is another this is another case, right? So you have black people who are according to them. Because I don't even believe that they lived the wrong white people. I, I don't believe white people ever owned no land. That they was on a plantation all the way into 1865. But we're going to get into that, right? But according to what we're reading here, and a person who, in their perception to what they don't know, right? They said that Antoine Bucklet was richer. Was He, he was the, one of the richest men in the South. Richer than his own white neighbors, right? It said, according to to historians, estimate his his worth around two hundred and sixty five thousand, around two hundred times the average annual income, as well as his land. He also owned a significant number of slaves. Moreover, he was well respected in society, not just because of his riches. The Bucklet was in many ways a true Southern gentleman. Smart, well dressed, well dressed, right? Smart, well dressed, right? And Debonair, Debonair, right? The duck, the the Buckler family, the Bucklet family, had come a long way. In a very short space of time, right? Unlike many slave owners of color of the period, Antoine Bucklet was born to free to, to free parents, right? Now they're gonna say he was born to free parents, all right? So he was born to free parents, right? He was born in 1810, the son of a part owner of a sugar plantation close to Baton Rouge. So his father was a free man. 
and his father owned a sugar plantation. Now, look, think of it like this, right? For every Negro that owned a cotton, sugar, rice plantation or whatever, even had niggas beating copper, according to what we just read about the first whites to be born here or um, manufacturing shit, right? So that would make, just like right now, right? If you, back in the day, in the 1900s, they give you the stories. Oh, you had a black man who opened a supermarket right next to a white person, and they went across the street and lynched them. So why weren't they doing that shit to, um, why they didn't do this shit to Antoine Buckler or his, or his father, who was a part owner of a fucking sugar plantation close to Baton Rouge? So why did they treat his father like that? When his when his father died, his mother moved to New Orleans with Antoine, younger brother and sister. Antoine, meanwhile, took over the plantation as well as the land. So he also inherited around seventy slaves. In eighteen thirty four, an other other um partner in the plantation sold up, and the whole business was split up equally between Antoine and his siblings. However, Antoine retained a position of leadership growing the business until by until by 1860 now look now we get close to the civil war now we start to see that a lot of these europeans are starting to encroach or after the civil war now we don't even know if he lost his shit in 1860 for all we know he could have married the slavic woman and they just continue to bleach out and now they the people who own the um who own all who who who, who has um, inherited his wealth? Because we're going to see that with P.C. Rixard, right? So, look. Even when you see this. They say some slaves, some free slaves will gain an education and earn money before taking on slaves of their own, right? <laughs> so, so, who was teaching them? So they, they went into European institutions? No, because the European institution is the general education system. Prior to that, we weren't being taught by no Europeans. So like I said, you have to question all of this shit. You have to question everything. Don't nobody have the exact story, even the people who write in this shit. They write it according to the history that they already been told, which a lot of these people, they are kind of curious because they're like, well, hmm, this, this is interesting. I've never learned about this in school. Hmm. And never think about, oh, they didn't want you to learn about it. They wanted you to do what? In our dreams, we have limited resources and our people yield themselves with perfect docility to our molding hands. Okay, this is what they this is what they wanted from you, nigga. Nothing more, nothing less. And this is per nineteen. Well, this is nineteen twenty, nineteen twenty. But we know that the general education system was formed for Frederick T. Gates. Let me see. We know this is from nineteen oh six. Alright, we already went through this, so we already understand what these what intentions that these people had in regards to us and our history and who we really are. So anytime that they write any of this shit, you cannot read no whole article and take it verbatim or take that shit for face value. That's and you can't do that, especially when it's dealing with this history, because it's too many holes and too many things that's not absolute. You can't take that information and make it absolute. You have to become a critical thinker at that point in time. So let's continue. So uh, we got Andrew Darnford, right? I don't really want to go over that, but I right, send this one, my bad, y'all. <clears throat> Alright, so number 10 We went over um, Pope It's another one Jacob Gaskin Never heard about him Well, then again I've read this before So I've heard about him But So Jacob Gas Gaskin 
was born free only because his mother was a free woman. His father was still a slave at the same at the, at the time of his birth. This was rather common at the time, and the mother eventually wanted to buy Jacob's father so that he would no longer have to work as a slave. So work as a slave, okay, on a plantation, right? Work, work as a employee on a plantation, right? When Jacob grew up, and remember, I don't subscribe to all of these stories, but we're gonna read it just for the hell of it, and if you see anything that's not consistent with anything that we're being told, Definitely crush, crushing it. Definitely put on your critical thinking hat. Definitely get ready to decipher and decode this information that's being presented, right? So while Jacob grew older, his mother helped him by his father. The family was happy with the arrangement, although the father was technically still their slave until he attempted to do what all parents do is rip, reprimand, reprimand his son. This is when... This story becomes noticeable, all right? Nat Butler, we went over Nat Butler, we went over um, J Judas um, Angel, right? Right here, so the widow of C. Richard and the son of P.C. Richards, right? So in 1860, slave owners, white or black, around, I mean, owned around one to five slaves on average. About 28% of the free black population in New Orleans at that time owned slaves, with at least six owning 65 or more, right? Now look, now look, how do we just, didn't I just show you, show and prove to you? Well, we're in Virginia now, but in Louisiana, I showed you more than six people who own more than 65 slaves. Well, matter of fact, you know what? let me see, I want to make sure I was correct on that. Well, it was 65 or more. Hmm. We'll go back and check it out. All right. So, C. Richard and her son, P.C. Now, remember, P.C. Richard is is a, um, they have a conglomerate, conglomerate of, um, elect, electric, electronical stores. You know, P.C. Richard's electronics, um, you know, they sell everything up in there. From microwaves all the way to fucking... Whatever, I mean, everything, they sell everything, okay, cameras, TVs, um, camcorders, laptops, etc., they sell everything, right, it said, goes, go above and beyond D6 slave owners by owning over twice as many, the widow and her son operated a large sugar plantation. So we got another motherfucker who owned a sugar plantation, right? Together and owned more slaves than all other black slave owners in Louisiana in 1860, topping off at at least 152. So white people were so racist. Why would they allow a Negro... To own a sugar plantation and be in the same market that they in, because now that was so their market up, because it's just one extra person that the sales has to be distributed among all of the people who sell sugar, right? Why would they let that happen? Considering this, right? This, right here. Considering this. Considering this. Look at look 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 how treacherous these people been. Right, so look. And you meet people. You step off the side and bow your head until they pass. Because if you didn't, it could be considered disrespectful. They might kick you, beat you, or put you in jail. I'm not for integration. I'm for segre segregation. And I will be until I die. Segregation now. Segregation tomorrow and segregation forever. In June 1963. That's one of your buildings right there, right? Check this out. Let me see something real quick, right? So they want segregation in the 1900s, right? But they ain't want segregation according to according to um Antoine. Hold up.
So according to him, they didn't want segregation, right? And they said, remember, he was regarded as one of the richest men in the South. Richer even than his white neighbors. Okay? So why, why at that point in time, why wasn't the Europeans doing this? Like they doing in this video right here. Three, Alabama Governor George Wallace blocked two African Americans from enrolling at the all-white University of Alabama. After federal marshals and the National stepped in, Wallace stepped aside. For his daughter Peggy, it was a painful memory. It stained Alabama, of course. Freaky Adams Johnson grew up in Mississippi, surrounded by of racial segregation. How the fuck they ain't do that to Antoine and his family? Hmm? Why they ain't, why, so he's the richest motherfucker living amongst white people. And like I said, I don't even believe that they live among white people because white people couldn't own no land. And at that point in time, white people was on plantations. So, you know, if, if what the article say according to what they think is history, right? So why didn't they do this to the blacks that was owning all these slaves earlier? What made them, what, what made white people change their heart and start doing this to us after the 1900s? You ask yourself that question. What made white people change to where they was doing it? Because we go here too, right? So we go back. No, nah, not there. Hold up. We go here, right? This is this this also something that people have to consider, right? In the South, an estimated two or three blacks was lynched every week in the late 1900s and early 20th century. In Mississippi alone, 500 blacks were lynched from 18 the 1800s, which is the late 1800s, to 1955. A nationwide, I mean nationwide, the figure climbed to 5,000. Okay, it's saying although rape is is often cited as a rationale statistic now statistics now show that only about one fourth of the lynchings from 1880 now they got the date right here from 1880 to 1930 was prompted by a, 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 a um whatever accusation of rape it's saying the fact most of the lynchings were political activists, laborers, organizers, or black men and women who violated white expectations of black defense and was deemed uppity or insolent. <clears throat> insolent. Through most victims, through, no, I'm saying though most victims were black men, women were by no means exempt. Okay, so look, ponder that, nigga. Ponder that. Ponder that. Because I mean, when you really, when you really understand, right? <clears throat> let me go. Let me go into something else real quick. A lot of people they misinterpret the forgotten cause of civil war, right? And understand that this book was just written. So even when you get into this book, you got to take some of the truth. You have to take some of the truth from the fact that the individual who wrote this book actually is coming from a European or eugenics mind state, right? So, all right. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to go into boom, boom, boom. We can go into this right here. Um, and I'm just going to explain. Matter of fact, I'm going to read the, this whole thing. It's saying these individuals look white, right? Matter of fact, you know what? No, let me go right here. All right, so it's saying complexion. One who parentage is both white and black. This is a literal meaning another meaning exists as well a meaning more much more relevant to the study throughout slavery days a slave was a mulatto if he or she had any degree of white and black parentage 
it must be it must be clearly understood that even after many generations white people who had a mere one drop of black blood could be I mean could be and were enslaved as mulattoes white mulattoes that is to say white slaves this individual this individual these individuals look white and had no visible now he's saying african remember when this book was made this book was not made in the late 1800s this books this book was made in the um late eight 1900s right i'm sorry damn was it made like around I forgot the date exactly when this book was made. Somebody Google it and you find out for yourself, though. But just know that the same rhetoric that's coming from eugenics is saying all black people, all black people around the world came from Africa. And Africa is a continent. No matter how long black people been in all these places, they're African, according to them. But we know that they're trying to hide the fact that we was already in the Americas, right? So, boom. It said African ancestry whatsoever. It said many people have heard of the one drop rule, whereby the most infest the most infestable amount of black blood makes one black. What is often overlooked, however, is the fact that in reality the social classification a white person and a person who is a descent a distant black ancestor but no discernible black traits look the same and are psychologically white human beings it was common think it was it was common thinking in the north to hold that slaves who looked like whites were white people and not mulattoes not black people all right so look it's saying as will be seen the political ramifications of white slavery were the, were the ultimate cause of the civil war now check this out this is how we can easily flip the script on this right do we got evidence of white people being being slaves here do we got evidence of white people being slaves here we got this 300,000 whites was bought was was the first people being shipped to the Americas right we got more evidence here right We got more evidence. The first slaves that we hear of in North Carolina were white people. Now, they're not saying that the people who was born here from Britain is mixed with nobody. They're not saying that these people right here is mixed with nobody. So, for him to make that asinine statement to make you think that, oh, the only white people who was enslaved was those of um of, of, of a mixed race of people. We know that's, that's, that's bullshit. We know that that's not true at all. Because they bought 300,000 people according to what they saying here. Now look, check this out too, right? I'm just going to put this out there, right? What was the original numbers that SlaveVoid.org put out there? They originally said it was 300,000 Negroes that came here. This is what they was originally pushing. They originally, they're uh, SlaveVoid.org originally said that in North America... 300,000 Negro or 300,000 Africans only came to North America. But then we get a we get a, um, a number, which we know it was more than that, because I can go a little deeper with this shit. I'm just trying to make this, uh, I'm trying to condense a lot of this information, because a lot of shit to go over, right? But we can find more. We can find millions of these people brought over here, right? But then at the same time, they're telling you they bought 300,000 whites, and they was the first people who would be introduced into slavery? And then we find other resources that say the same thing. The first slaves that we hear of in North Carolina were white people. And their masters was Indians. Right? But then check this out. Then we go here. Right? And I like to use this because um, it's, it has a lot of good information. And actually some of these documentations are in... The making of white make the making of a white Indian. That's the actual book, and some of these um, documents are also listed in there. Um, but however it go, look, I read we read about Nat or whatever who said he was um, falsely or unlawful slave enslaved. Right? They say on the complaint, Nat an Indian or musty boy who said to be set free. Da da da. Boom, and go down. It says Nat. 
was most likely half Indian. So therefore, mulatto or musty could be used interchangeably. Use of these terms was influenced by the status of his servitude, right? Now understand this, right? Nat may have had a white mother. This is the reason why he was a slave and he knew his father was an aborigine, okay? Same thing. 1690, Thomas Mayo, an Indian, right? Saying Indian, whatever, he was a judge, 14 years old, um, Custerfield County, Virginia, on the motions of Sybil, right, Sybil, an Indian woman held in slavery by Joseph Ashbrook has have 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 leave to prosecute for her freedom and former's properest, right? Sybil, an Indian, wench, right? They call her a wench, so it must be bad wench, right? Nonetheless, though, it's saying, uh oh, matter of fact, what? okay, yeah, Sybil, an Indian wench, um, I guess this is Joseph V. Ashbrook. They just got V. They put it, you know, how sometimes they put the middle name first, the first name middle, and then put the last name. However, go, however the fuck they be doing this shit in some cases, though. But nonetheless, though, right? So, got Sybil again. It's saying dismissed Sybil was most likely less than full blood Indian. She was described as Indian up until the point it was determined that she was she was legally a slave. Then she was described as a mulatto used in the term influenced by the status of her servitude. Okay. <clears throat> then when then Winnell County, right? VA, right? Register free papers of Nancy Coleman, a dark brown. It said a Nancy Coleman, a dark brown, well-made mulatto woman, freed by the judgment of the General Court of John Hardaway, being a descendant of Indians. Now listen, think of it like this, right? At the same time that I'm reading all this shit, you already got Negro slave owners. We already, we already got Negro slave owners, right? We already got Negro slave owners. I don't want to hear there was, there was only a small majority. We already even went through VA. We can go on Maryland next. Maryland is Virginia. All of that shit, Maryland, Washington, D.C., the whole DM, the whole DMV area is was all Virginia. Okay? So we can we can pretty much conclude. Cause even we go ahead, boom. So we already went through Virginia. We can count one, two, three. Four, five. Hold on, I gotta let this one load up. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? All right, so it's 10 pages of Virginia, right? So let's go to Maryland or Maru land. So it's Maryland. So this is, I guess this is starting around. Let me see. And that's another thing I noticed. In this book, there's certain things that is kind of confusing, but um, all right, let's go on to Maryland. So we got the first page of Maryland 1. Maryland continue. We got 2. Maryland continued again. We got 3. All right, so it's only, it's only a couple pages of um, Maryland like three and a half pages, but you can add Maryland to Virginia. You can add Maryland to Virginia and also North Carolina. All that shit was all in the same regions, right? Now, anywho. So we see 
in Virginia, Virginia had a large number of, of so-called Negro slave owners, right? Now, you may ask yourself, well, why is they calling Nancy Dark Brown, da da da, saying being a descendant of Indians? So, if she's a descendant of Indians, what is her other descendancy of? Slavic, right? Daniel Coleman, a dark brown free Negro or Indian. Now, what you mean, free Negro or Indian, right? It said, formerly held as a slave by Joseph Hardaway, but obtained his freedom by judgment of the general court, right? Boom. Go all the way down. Fuck it. August 14, 1800. Registered free paper. Hagger, a jumper, a dark brown mulatto, or Indian woman, short bushy hair, obtained her freedom from Stephen Dance as being a descendant of Indians. So now, in a lot of the cases, these people was going to court saying, nigga, I descend from Indians. Yeah, my mother's a Slavic, but my, my other, I descend from Indians. You see what I'm saying? And this, this is where a lot of the confusions is going on. This is why a lot of people can't understand what's going on. Yeah, there was some Negroes who were slaves because they had a white mother. And in some cases, that they was just grabbing people off, of, they was just grabbing people and putting them in servitude. too. And these are also Negroes that's doing this. Making people work for them, right? So, being a descendant of Indian, right? May 27, 1805, registered free paper, Betsy Coleman, a dark brown Negro woman, formerly held as a slave by John Hardaway, liberated by the judge, general court, as being a descendant of Indians, right? Let me go down. <clears throat> Cumberland County is saying the court to bind out the children of Ruth Matthews, an Indian woman, to William Flemings. Ruth is described as a free mulatto at one time, an Indian, an Indian at an at another, right? So we see what's going on here, right? So check this out. So Thomas Cumberland, Cumberland. It's saying brings before this court his servant mulatto man Robin and informed the court that he half several times ran away ordered to serve one year no to serve one year from release date Robin an Indian fled against the major Cumberland next court Robin Indian offered free from Thomas Cumberland service at the end of the year service what up right so basically he's saying that um that because he tried to run away they gave him more time right now let me see something real quick i want to show y'all something no back to that it's this book no it's this one right here check this out oh matter of fact it's right on top of this too what i'm looking for runaway slaves It's a very interesting book too, y'all. Oh, just bear with me real quick. Let me redo this shit because it jumps. Just bear with me. Oh my god, this shit just jumped all the way back down. Shit. Let me see something. Let me put runaway slaves in there. Alright, I think this is it. Let me. Alright, yeah, this is it right here. Boom. Let me open that back up. Alright, so runaways. One of the one of the con the the, the commonest delinquencies on the part of the slaves was running away <clears throat> it's saying used to the forest now look check this out this is what they add to it duck this bob this shit do not fall victim to their educational system right 
used to the form the forest life in Africa. So they saying that because the slaves was used to the far forest life in Africa, they they could easily run away and go into the bushes. But we know that they're white runaway slaves, right? So like I said, even in the press into a lot of these books, they give you some truth to it, but then they also keep on putting references that any Negro who was a slave was a slave from Africa. And I just we just pretty much just walked through exactly who the slave, who the mulatto, and what is what, right? So saying use the farms, whatever, custom to much um severity is saying on the farm of the frontier planter it was no greater hardship to them to live for months or years in a camp in a or in a swamp do you believe that that's all bullshit it seems that you no know, it seems to that there was no there was no waiting at the time freemen who would help the runaways the law against the practice was very severe the act of 1715 which has already been cited more than once provided that any person who should harbor a runaway slave more than one night should pay to the owner of the slave 10 shillings for each 24 hours he had been kept in access of the first night you understand that so now these cases is also being applied to negroes who taken in these runaway slavic women and when they catch them that was the tax that they was putting on them a lot of times okay then they also could buy their freedom as well too as we just seen as we read in um the 1830 Negro slave owners. They also could buy their freedom as well, right? But nonetheless, though, right? Um, I just wanted to just add that to it. But let's get back into this, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so where the fuck was we at? Uh, we was right here. Boom, boom, boom. All right, so look. You notice that in a lot of these, a lot of these little um, timelines I'm reading from, right, it's giving a description of what these people look like, right? Now, let me see something. Let's go down. All right, so look. It said, Petition of Tom, a mulatto or musty, setting forth that he is a grandson of a free white, a free white woman, right? A free white woman, right? Now, we already know why they got terms like free white people or free white man, free white person and all that because we know that these people were slaves. You understand? They're the only slaves. And this white woman that's free might might have claimed the same thing that the rest of these people claiming that they're descendants of Indians and able to prove the shit in court. And now she's classified as a white person, but she's really a mulatto. See, so, so a lot of this shit is kind of confusing when you kind of look at it. And you have to kind of make sense because they're offering their explanations. In a lot of cases, is not making no sense to what the fuck we're reading, the history ramifications, or the history, the history that they put out here in all these educational systems, as well as the people who regurgitate and um, say a lot of stuff verbatimly of what they read in a lot of these articles, right? So let's continue, right? So look. It said, and ha haste a just right to freedom, but that his master, Alexander Trent, contrary to the law or, e or equality, detains him in slavery. Now, let me see something real quick. Let me see something real quick. Let me see something real quick. All right, he not in here. Okay. And let me see one more thing though before we go down. Where was that other motherfucker? Let's see. Let's see if he in here. Okay, he's not in there knees. Okay, all right. So let's continue. 
so where was we at? Uh, we was dealing with time right here, right? Alright, um... Alright, so let's read this one right here. Alright, 1740 potential against Thomas Blow blog. It's saying it it is ordered that the court warden of Dell Parish do bind out Joe a mulatto, the son of Nan, an Indian woman. According to law, mulatto is used here to describe an half Indian an Indian half blood. Okay? An Indian half blood. Now check this out, right? Now, even in the case of him, right? Now, if he had a white father, right? If he had a white father and a so-called Negro mother, why the Negro mother ain't the slave? You understand what I'm saying? Why is, why is they saying that his mother was an Indian woman, right? Because it's also, like like I said, they it's a lot of stuff that I see that is fucking confusing, and we're trying to just make sense out of it. Some of the stuff we ain't going to be able to make sense of it. Some of it we can't. All right? Um, 1747, Richard Randolph to my son John, the third party of my slave. He's he's taking my two Negroes, Indian, my two Negro, Indian, John, and Exes, as part of his third which two Negroes I purpose I I propose he should have. It's saying an Indian is described here as a Negro. The term is influenced by his servitude. Bullshit, right? So let's go to this one right here. Pretty much same thing. 1759 ordered that the church warden of Henrico Parish bond out Ben Scott and Roger, an Indian boy, according to the law. Now, like I said, as you go through this, you see a lot of these instances, man. A lot of them is, is being free because they're saying that they're descendants of Indians. You understand what I'm saying? So, you, so that the gentleman I just read that was ahead, right, who mother name was Nan. So, a white man impregnated an Indian, right? A white man impregnated an Indian and didn't enslave the Indian. How did the white man just run down? And if Indians was living amongst each other, they just went walking around like like how we got free people walking around in town now, where you have all these ethnicities and races. The Aborigines lived amongst the Aborigines. So how did the white man just come and just come in and just say, "I want to take you get the fuck out of here"? A lot of this shit just doesn't make sense when you really get get down to the mix of it. I um, let me see. Uh, we read that. Eighteen eighteen, John Hick, a free man of color, brown complexion, thirty four years old, born free of an Indian mother, per certification from Sussex County. Hmm. I'll read this one. William Charvis. Charvis. Was a, was arrested and charged as a free person of color with carrying a shotgun in violation in North Carolina state law. It's saying he was convicted by promptly appealing, claiming that the law restricted free Negroes, not persons of color. The court, the appear, the appeal court reversed the lower court findings that free persons of color may be. Then, for all we can see, persons colored by Indian blood. Look, colored by Indian blood. It's saying all person descended from Negro ancestors beyond the fourth degree. Now, Negroes are also Indian, so how the fuck we know? Like I said, according to some of the stuff, you have to kind of, like, you have to kind of go with it, right? Now, check this out. This is what I wanted to read, and I'm probably going to do a part two to this one, but check this out, right? So, look... It's in 1871, North Carolina Joint Senate and House Committee interviewed Robeson County Judge Gow Litch about the free person of color residing within his county um, Senate. Half of the color population, yes sir, half of the color population of Robeson County were never slaves at all. It's saying, so Senate, what are they? Are they Negroes? Well, sir, 
I desire to tell you the truth as near as I can, but I do not know what they are. I think they are a mixture of the Spanish, Portuguese, and Indians. Right now, look, if the Spanish are white people, the Portuguese are white people, then the Indians had to be black. Because they call them color populations. But he's saying that they're a mixture between all three of them, right? Bullshit, right? So you think they are mixed Negro Indian, Negroes and Indians? I do not think that in the class of population there is much Negro blood at all. Of that half of the color population that I have attempted to describe all have always been free. They are called mulattoes. That is the name they are known by as a contra a contra distinguished con, contra distinguished from negroes i think they are indian origin right <clears throat> i understand you to say that these seven or eight hundred persons you just dis, you distinct you designate as mulattoes are not negroes but are a mix portuguese and spanish white blood and Indian blood you think they are not generally Negroes I do not think that the Negro blood predominates the word mulatto means a cross between a white and a Negro yes sir it's saying um you do not mean the word to be understood in the sense when applied to these people I really do not know how to describe these people right saying even people not considered to bear negro ancestry could be called mulatto as late as 1870 the term portuguese is used here now remember 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 the portuguese and the spanish wasn't in va or in virginia so we know that even when they tell you that oh shit um anthony johnson and and the ship they was captured by um a Portuguese vessel. The Portuguese wasn't even on his side. So that's that's another fucking lie, right? And even when they tell you, oh, the Spanish was in North Carolina, all, all that shit is bullshit. They ain't talking about nothing but either conquistadors or Moors that came back over here that was part of the old empire, right? So it said even a person considered the bare Negro ancestry could be called mulatto by late 1870. The term Portuguese used here to infer Spanish or Indian descent. Portuguese also used by persons of North Carolina origin residing in South Carolina, Tennessee, etc. to describe mixed Indian white persons from the North Carolina, Virginia border area during this same time period, right? So we're going to, I'm going to go down a little bit more. I'm going to read a little bit more before we get out of here. Um, so the Virginia Gazette. So this is 1752. Run away from the descri subscribers living in Hanover County. About the middle of March last, a young Indian fellow named Ned, about 20 years of age, pret pretends to pass as a freeman. Ned identity as an Indian influenced by his servitude. Hmm. Go figure, right? 1760, Isaac, an Indian slave. It said, age about 40 years, run away from my plantation of George Greek, George Creek in Bucklingham. He was born and lived many years on the brook of the Chickahominy, right? It said, and had some connections. I guess that's what they're saying, connections. That's how they're spelling it. Connections in Gooch land. The Gooch. Y'all remember the Gooch from, um, fucking, um, f oh, what the fuck is the name of that shit? Where Arnold and them, the Gooch used to always call them on the phone and shit. <laughs> My, um, different strokes, all right? The Gooch. But Gooch land, where he may possibly be a present. He, he wore long curly hair before his imp, imp Implement, implode, ep, whatever, man, I can't pronounce that shit. It's saying, but the continuance and the disposition are altogether Indian, okay? 1877 committed to the prison of York. A Negro boy who say he is free and was born in, 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 
in the Indian town. Now, an Indian town. I thought we had fucking tribes living in fucking um huts and shit. An Indian town, nigga, on the Pomoki River, right? York identity as an Indian influenced by a servitude. 18, 1770, Prince George County, run away from subscribers on Monday the 19th, Negro fella named Frank of a yellow, now look, it, this is when we get the different complexions from the intermixing, a yellowish, a yellow complexion, right, a yellow complexion, they call it yellow, red bones, um, yellow, I'm light skinned, my father used to always call you yellow nigga, always, you know what I'm saying, um, et cetera, right? So we always heard, you know, light-skinned people was turned yellow at some time, dark brown, light brown, I mean light brown, whatever. Y'all get it, right? He has a wife among the Indians in the Indian town of Pomoki River, okay? 1772, committed to the public jail from James City Prison, a runaway woman named Molly. She belongs to Charles Bud of Charles City County, about 40 years old, has a prominent nose, and her complexion would pass for one of the Indian races. Now, what the fuck is the Indian race complexion? Because they're not saying none of these people are mixed with fucking Africans. None of them. None of them they saying is mixed with Africans. So who is the other person that they would be mixed with? Europeans, white people. Okay. Seventeen seventy two, a runaway from the subscriber in Cumberland County. A more Cumberland, a mulatto man named Jim, who is a slave but pretend to have the rights to his freedom. His father was an Indian. And then now so if his father was an Indian, who did he mix with for him to be deemed a slave? Hmm. Right? Um, his father's an Indian of the name of Cheshire, right? Cheshire. A very likely and very likely will call himself James Cheshire. James Cheshire or Chink. He he is a short, well set fella about twenty seven years of age, with long black hair resembling an Indian. The use of mulatto is described a Indian of half blood. So they saying, all right, so Indians are dark skin. So we know this now. Indians are dark skin, and they sometimes say Indians are Negroes, but they're not saying that none of these people are mixed with African and none of these people are mixed with black people. They saying that they're either Indian and they're giving you a complexion or what these people look like. Like for example, look, they made sure. Was it this one right here? And this one right here. Boom. We talk about Molly. It says Molly, 40 years old, has a prominent nose, meaning she has a broad nose, right? It's saying her complexion will pass for one of the Indian race. So what complexion is an Indian race? Right? We talked about Jim, talked about how long his hair is, resembling Indians, using mulatto, describe Indian half blood, the use of the term influenced by a servitude. 1772 committed to the jail of Slory County a Negro man who says his name is Tom and that he belongs to Benjamin um, Clement Clement of Sussex appears to be of a Indian breed person of an obvious in Indian ancestry described as a Negro huh? why why would they describe you as a Negro if they know you're Indian because all Indian and like I said a lot of these cases, these are Negroes who's, who's, these are Negroes, like a lot of these judges and shit like that, that they're saying that these people are, um, they was put into slavery because they got European um, ancestors, or most of them came from a Slavic woman. So even you see, even when you see Negroes who are running the judges, run, I mean, who are judges running the courts, running these towns, running these plantations. They enslaving their own people as a result of the condition of the mother, the condition of child. And especially in Virginia, that's something that's very prominent. Like I said, in 18, no, in 16, I think it's 64 or 1666, um, when they made that law, the condition of the child is the condition of the mother. And that's as a result of, like we get in Bacon Rebellion. Bacon Rebellion was because Negroes was in, was um, taking these Slavic women. And we don't even really know if the rebellion was amongst us from trying to stop these niggas from mixing with these people, called, creating these other classifications and making it more difficult for us to be able to classify who is with us and who is not with us. 
if I said that entirely correctly. But let's continue, right? All right, so I run away, run away from the scriber last month, a Negro man, Tom, is saying of a yellowish complexion. See, look. So, all right, so we know now, we know now that the Indians are dark skin, right? And I'm not saying we know we know in some cases, you know, some of us come out light brown, some of us come out light skin, etc. We understand that. But I'm just saying in the cases of where they're doing it, these are Indians who mixing with Slavic women. That's the reason why they giving you that's the reason why they keep on saying your color or what you look like. The yellowish complexion. Much the appearance of an Indian. He has a different kind. No, I'm saying his hair is a different kind from that of a Negro. Rather than they saying rather more Indian, but the other ones they saying that she had bushy hair. Like so, it's like you know, in some of these cases, a lot of this shit is just like you know, you have to take, you have to chew the meat and spit the bones out, right? It's saying, but partaking of both, person of obvious Indians ancestors described as a Negro, right? March 17, 75, run away from the subscriber, a very bright mulatto man. Now, look, here we go with these. These They're giving you these classifications, and they're giving you these complexions, and they're, and they're basically, they, they're putting influence, and, or they, um I don't want to say, they putting emphasis on the complexions alone, right? Mulatto man named Steven, his wife, Perp, Perp, Perp. Perp I can't pronounce that. Went away with him, a remarkable white Indian woman. Hmm. Interesting, right? So look, it said run away from the subscribers. Harry, um, Virginia born five five feet eight inches or nine inches high. 30 years of age, a dark mulatto with long bushy hair. He is of an Indian breed. Person obvious Indian ancestor described as a mulatto, right? 1775, Brute County, North Carolina, run away from William Tab, a slave named Charles, of Indian of an uh, Indian breed, about 23 years of age, with straight black hair, light complexion. Look, see, what I'm saying this is what this is what I'm trying to tell y'all. These people are descendants. Their mother are Slavs. That's the reason why they keep on freeing them because they say that they're Indian. And it's Negroes who freeing them. Negroes who freeing them, right? Said raised in George County, Virginia, right? South Carolina, right? Um, well, no, I think this is in South Carolina. Sorry about that, y'all. Right here, this, this whole part. 1731, special meeting of South Carolina House Common after a member has announced that free colored men with their white wives. Look, look, <laughs> look motherfuckers. Look, bam. Special meeting in South Carolina House of Common after a member had announced that free colored men with their white wives. Wives has immigrated from where? From Virginia, with the intentions of settling on the Santee River. Reports of government of Governor Robert Johnson. I have had them. Let me get my circle so I don't get lost. I've had them before me and my council, and upon exam examination, find that they are not Negroes nor slaves, but free people. Right? <laughs> look, look. Remember, understand this term slave. And Negro and his and and this man, a free colored man with their white wives. They could have a man you missing these white women. These Negroes who was really Indians and man you missing these white women as their concubines. <laughs> so let's get to you, right? Alright, so it's saying that they are not they are not Negroes nor slaves, but free persons that the father of them here is named um, Gideon Gibson and his father was also free 1753 will will of Alexander Wood of St. James Goose Greek passion planter to his half-breed Indian named Dookie Dookie Cox and George Cox born of his Indian slave now look, now they say he had an Indian slave, and these was born. They was born from the Indian slave, right? Named Jenny and Min Minerva, 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 Watkins, B 
both of Indian slaves named Ma 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 manumission upon his death. All right. 1794, Isaac Lingard, Isaac Mitchell, um, Jonathan Price, Spencer Bolton, William N. Sweat, and 29 other free persons of color seek to repeal an act for imposing a poll tax on free Negroes, Mustis, and Mulattoes. They wish to support the government by the poll tax called Great Hardship Among Free Women of Color, especially widows with large families. Tax collectors hunted them down and extorted payments. And extorted payments. Desire to desire of a legal system to lump all non-whites in one category right which remember sp shoot the meat spit the bones out because a lot of shit is very confusing well i'm gonna i'm gonna conclude with um south carolina and then um i'll open the link up for a little bit if anybody have any questions or anything anybody want to add to it okay so um 1795 a state carolinian advised in North Carolina Central and Fayetteville Gazette $10 reward to deliver the subscriber in Georgetown a, a musty servant woman named Nancy I, hold up Oxendine I guess that's how you pronounce it she is a stout witch of a light complexion, right? Of a light complexion, about 30 years old. It is supposed she has been travels. No, she, no, I'm sorry. It is supposed she has been travels. Uh, that's how it's pronounced. Always by her brother and sister. Um, the the latter lives in Fayetteville. All right. So let me see. Now you see this, right? Hold up, where was we at? Remember this, right? A special meeting in the South Carolina House of Commons after a member announced that free colored men with their white wives. <laughs> Let me make sure I covered everything I want to cover before I get the fuck out of here, man. Oh, yeah, I wanted to go over this. I want to see if I can read the bottom of it this time. <clears throat> now, since we went over Louisiana, I just wanted to, let me see, let me see if I can. Let me see something. Nah, I ain't gonna be able to read that. Hold up. I'm gonna read the bottom right here. Because at the bottom right here, it tells you pretty much like how the Europeans after 1868 and the ones that was practically freed from the Civil War, as we see. Because even the story, is, uh, the, um, the forgotten cause of the Civil War is still not correct. Because we got too many instances and too many accounts of Europeans being put into slavery, right? I wanted to read the bottom. I can't. This one is not clear. I got a kind of. Let me see something real quick. Just bear with me real quick. Because I actually got it on my phone as well. Let me see if I can open it up on my phone. Just bear with me, my good people. I think I can read. Let me see. No, I can't read this shit neither. This shit. But if anybody ever get a chance 
that actually got a clear version of um the distinguished gentleman right read the bottom right here read the bottom right here because in the bottom right here it talks about white terrorists and how these people and they said if these people come in our towns we're going to kill them and this is actually i'm just summarizing exactly what it um what i read within this this little um brief passage or brief text that's at the bottom right here of the distinguished members of the conventional assembly in 1868 right so now we know a lot of stories even even before you get into the 1800s are all bullshit right we know that we know that it was already negroes who been free here right and who owned slaves all the way up until all the way up into whatever story you want to subscribe to, right? Now look, I finish it off with Anthony Johnson, right? Let me open this up a little bit. You know something, two people. Sometimes I do not like the fucking font, yo. The font be fucking throwing me off, right? But nonetheless, though, Anthony Johnson, right? It said, nobody on the list has affected the history of slavery quite as much as Anthony Johnson. He is rumored to have been the first black man to arrive in Virginia as well as, as, well as the first black indentured servant in America, right? Um, he was also the first black man to gain his freedom and the first to own land as a true pioneer of the first Johnson couldn't stop there. Ironically, ironically, he became the first black slave owner, and it was his court case that solidified slavery in America. 18, nine, no, 1635. Now, I remember, I remember the story that they tell you. And that bitch, Anna, um, Hannah Nicole um, Smith, right, who wrote, who wrote that pseudo ass um, history, the 1619 story or whatever, which is some pseudo fucking history. And these Negroes out here who think they so prominent, so educated, and and like like a lot of them people who subscribe to that are the same people who the Pan Africans learn from. They learn from them, but then they'd be like, "Oh, you, oh, I learned this from a black man. You learned this from a black man who was mold, who mine was molded by the Rockefellers and um, Frederick T. Gates, and he regurgitated what they wanted, what they wanted to tell you." But they taught him, and he regurgitated that shit back to you, and now you believe what he's saying. Oh, he, he done read all these books. He got to be telling the truth. But did he cross-reference any of this? Did he decipher it? Did he decode any of this information? Because all this information is decoded, right? Well, let's continue, right? Um, da -da 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 -da. Where was we at? All right. Now, check this out. All right, 1635, Johnson was freed by giving 250 acres, a 250-acre plantation. So he was, a, he was a slave, and somebody gave, was nice enough to get this nigga a 250-acre plantation? Some racist devils that claim they bought you here on the bottom of a ship? Because they fucking lying. This nigga was a, um, he was a, what's the name, apprentice. He was an apprentice. Once he fully learned apprenticeship, then he went on to own that shit. This is what's going on here. These people is lying. These people then told us all of these lies, history that they never want to bring up. They never want to bring up all of these black slave owners. They never want to bring up. And they would they tell you their self, right? They tell you their self, right? Look, this little known his, historical this little known history is a fascinatingly recount recount in white cargo, right? They also tell you right here, right? Oh, you know what? I'm bugging. This I wanted to get into this one too right here. I'm gonna read a little bit of this. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Where was we at? Alright, now it's down. All right, you know what? I'm going to go back here real quick, and I'm going to come back and read that. So, all right, so Johnson was freed. And remember, look. All 
Nigga, remember blood on leaves, man. Look. We're here to prove a point. We're not here to bring up any, you know, past racism emotions or emotions some of you pan africans and you know some of these people are i mean a lot of all these people are ancestors that was being lynched right um let me see so look so look check this out So look, these racist motherfuckers right here who did this shit to this aboriginal man right here burnt this nigga on the cross, right? Look, so these racist motherfuckers right here, right, who brought you here from Africa, right, who claim who claim that they brought you here from Africa because according to historians and these so-called pan-Africans and these blacks that believe it, they will believe what? That Anthony Johnson came from Africa, right? But his name was Antonio, right? But... That's a whole nother story, right? But nonetheless, though, right, the the same racist people that we just seen right there who burnt this man on the fucking cross, right? After they freed Johnson, they gave him 200 acres, uh, a 200-acre plantation where he was the master of both um, black and white servants. Oh, but this stupid motherfucker, not a coincidence, will come up. Oh, they passed a law to stop black people from... Man, shut the fuck up, nigga. You a dummy. A fucking dummy, nigga. White people was always in bondage under black people, nigga. That's what they don't want you. That's what they don't... Like I said, bro. Then why would they say this then, right? If so, look. Aunt, Aunt, uh -uh, I'm sorry. Antoine Duck, Duckler, right? At his time of his death in 1870, 1870 no, I'm sorry, 1887, it's saying he was a wealthy man, a very wealthy man. In fact, he was widely regarded as one of the richest men in the South, richer even than his white neighbors. So why did his white neighbors practice this on him? Hmm? Why did his white neighbors go and take his land, right? Why, why didn't they go take his land? Hmm? Explain that one to me. Why didn't they go take his land, right? He, he, they said he, he richer, richer, even, I mean, no. He was one of the richest man, men in the South. Richer even than his white neighbors. Okay. This nigga had $260,000, nigga, back in fucking the 1800s, nigga. And hell knows how long ago he had that, man. And along with all the rest of the people that we read on here. White people were so racist. Oh, but white people wasn't living amongst us. Well, they get said right here. The richest man in the South, even, even more richer even than his white neighbor. So meaning that these devils right here, right? These devils right here, at some point in time, lived around him. And they done nothing to this nigga but show him respect. This nigga was able to pull up in the finest of the finest um, garments, etc. right? So why didn't they take his shit, right? Because he's some lying motherfuckers, man. His whole history is all bullshit, right? So once again, right, Anthony Johnson, right, <laughs> was brought here according to... According to Hannah Nicole Smith in the New York Times, which is ran by the CIA, right? Right? And the Washington Post and the New York Post and all that shit, right? Um, in 1865, right? 1865, Johnson was freed. And he was given 200 acre plantation, right? Where he could, where he was master over both blacks and white servants. And white servants, nigga. Oh, but they, they, they passed a law to after that you could not own white, you couldn't have white slaves no more. Remember, they ain't even white servants. We already know. They are slouts, right? They ain't no fucking white servants, nigga. They slouts, nigga. 
so used in the secondary sense because of the many slaves sold into, sold into slavery by conquering people, right? And we go here, well, well I'm curious. Well, what do a slave look like? Bam! Here we have him. Look, even your boy, look, look. E look, look, even your boy right here, look. A fucking slave. Even I think that this nigga's a robot or he's some type of um, homunculus human being that was created in a lab or whatever because this nigga look like he ain't got no soul, right? But nonetheless, though, even when we Google Slows, we, 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 we find that the founder of Facebook, which he ain't the found, founder of Facebook. Facebook, is he just the face piece of Facebook to make you the governmental RAM program that use your data against you and you and put you in analytical and put you in their database or whatever. They just want you to think that this, you know, oh, yeah, he, he happened to find it so people can connect with their family. And, you know, we don't have no benevolent um use of, of creation of um Facebook. We just created it for that purpose. No, they created to to be able to track you and be able to harbor and take a lot of your information and put it into some of these um I don't want to say um, data analysis systems that basically can, like, they know your algorithm. You understand what I'm saying? Like, with a lot of this shit. But that's a whole nother story, though, right? So, so okay. So, these are once again the styles, right? Look. You niggas who be swirling, boy. Look, you niggas who be swirling. If you had all, you'll probably had, and this is how Jack Johnson was rolling. Jack Johnson was rolling around with, with, with six Slavic women like this, nigga. Riding in his motherfucking, uh, I don't know what kind of car it is, but I'm about to show you. I'm a, it's something similar to what we see in um, the Sir Solomon Jones joints, right? So Jack Johnson was riding around with these Slavic women, right? This is the reason why they created the, the Racial Integrity Act, nigga. Because it was Negroes mixing with these Slavics, my dude. Negroes mixing with these Slavics. If these people were so racist, you would never see an image like this, right? Well, at that time, right? At that, I mean, let me see something. You'll never see a picture like this. Let me see something. <clears throat> You will never see a picture like this, right? And you know what I'm thinking, brother, brothers and sisters? The term color is coming from intermixing. And the term Negro is coming from intermixing as well, brother. Everybody who was a free per a, a free person, like I said, we had Indian name. They start applying free person color to anybody that you see free that that is that is outside of the expectations of what history taught you that that person is supposed to be a slave. They using these terminologies as a as a way to say that these people are mixed. Mulatto, now I'm starting to think Negro. And I'm so, starting to think colored. I'm starting to think colored are all conditions. And these are the terminologies that they was um labeling so called Aboriginal men who had um who had relations with Slavic women, therefore the off breed of the Slav of the Slavic women, if they wasn't a man manumission by the father, then they would take on the terms colored, negro, etc. Right? So this is what we see right here, fellas. So um one more thing before I get out of here. I wanna go back. Well ladies and gentlemen. So remember these are what Slavics look like, right? There's so many Europeans who could fit into the category of what these people look like. Okay? So, what was I at? I think it was this one. So, here go another source to kind of support what I just read. I'm going to blow it up a little bit. All right. It's saying the white sir, white, now look, it's saying the white slaves. Not indentured, not indentured, who be who begun to arrive here in 1618 included hundreds of children, wrath and strays, who have been rounded up from the streets of London to serve wealthy farmers in Virginia. Do you think somebody? You think Europeans came here and knew the science or knew agriculture or astronomy to be able to um 
to be able to um come here and open plantations up like that? Are you niggas out of your fucking mind? All right. Um. Let me see something. It said of the first three hundred. No, of the first 300 white slaves to land in Virginia, only 12 managed to survive four years later. The other died of ill treatment, disease, attacked by Native Americans, and or overworked, right? Contemporary records shows that one child victim, Elizabeth Abbott, was beaten to death when her master ordered her to be given 500 lashes for running away. Now, listen, they said I was a child, so, you know, rest rest in peace to that, um, to Elizabeth Abbott. Um, you know, I don't want to, I'm not glorifying none of this shit because I got children myself, so I don't give a fuck. I'm not, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, that's a white person. So, no, 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 that's still a human being, bro. So, at the end of the day, Elizabeth Albert was beating to death when her master ordered her to be given 500 lashes for running away. Now, if she would have, if she'd have been successful in running away, where do you think she would have ran into? She'd have ran into one of our towns. And one of you niggas, like the Slavic women I just previously showed, you, well, I guess when she would have been, when she'd have came to AIDS. But even back then, even back then, we, we got to keep it a buck, bro. People was, people was, um, People was taking um, um, young teenagers, man, as wives, man. So let's let's keep it real. Let's keep it 100. You had 14 year old, 13, all, 14 all the way to, to 18. They was taking these children, or, or no, what we call children. At that point in time, I don't, I don't, I'm still looking at my children now. But at that point in time, you had you had older men who was engaging in the exploitation of under underage underage relationships I don't want to call it pedophilia because pedophilia is under the age of adolescence so once you get past 12 it's no longer pedophilia but it's under racial I mean it's under um y'all understand the fuck I'm saying I don't need to go further because that shit right there just give me the fucking chills talking about it but let's continue man alright so look Contemporary records show that one child victim, Elizabeth Abbott, rest in peace to Elizabeth Abbott once again, was beaten to death when her master ordered her to be given 500 lashes for running away. Okay. At least seven, 70,000 white men, women and children from England and Ireland, Ireland were shipped to the colonies to be sold as slaves on auction blocks during 170 years of British rule. Now, once again, right? It's a lot of fucking people, bro. But we read in other articles say 300,000. So at what point in time do they have to bring Africans here? Oh, but the Dutch had this... The, pseudo shit bro the Dutch at that point in time was Negroes there wasn't no Spanish it was still out Andalusia so these were Negroes returnees the Dutch was Negroes when they talk about York and all this other, these are also Negroes all of this shit King James um, Charles V um, King, um, Queen Char um, Charlotte all of these motherfuckers was Negroes bro all of them was Negroes wasn't the white people coming here just taking over no land like that they, it, it's being told by them but Rest in peace to Elizabeth Abbott, but whoever got a hand and did that to what they did to her, that more that could have been a Negro too. That could have been a Negro who who gave her the five hundred lashes. Okay, so look. <clears throat> white slaves, white slaves transported to the colony, suffering a staggering loss of life. In the 17th and 18th century, during the voyage of America, the white slaves were kept below deck for the entire 9 to 12 week journey. They were chained with 50 other men to board and with padlock collars around their necks. Hmm. The weeks of confinement below decks in the ships stiffened, hardened, and often resulted in an outbreak of continuous diseases, including 
Caloria, Caloria, and Decentria. I don't know what the fuck that is, but I'm going to definitely look that up when I get up out of here. But look, even even these people are, are, gener are, are um, generous to tell you that they, you cannot hold people like that for weeks without it breaking. I say outbreaks of a contag contagious disease, nigga. So, so the whole shitload would have been gone if these was Negroes and however the story go. Cause I don't like in a lot of cases, man. I don't, I don't know. Sometimes I think, according to the research that I've seen, that it was all Europeans was created here. And I'm not saying that to try to like make myself more superior than any so-called sentient being or dom or be dominant over any so-called sentient being on the planet. It's just the reality to what we're what what we're being told. Okay. Um. Ship, ship carrying, carrying white slaves to America often l lost what? Half of their slaves to death, nigga. Now, ain't this the story that they tell us about us? Ain't this the story that they tell us about us? Is this the story that they tell us? I don't need, let me see something real quick. I ain't checked back in with y'all in a minute. I don't. I'm just on my phone. I don't even know what we got going on here. Uncle Tom, cat, peace to the gods, peace to the goddesses, man. Y'all already know what time. Ain't that the story that they tell us? And like I said, they generous. They they don't have no problem with. They have no problem telling you that this shit that shit happened to you. They have no problem. They generous with the information, right? Look, <laughs> they generous with it. Check it out. Let's go back. So look, <laughs> so look, they was chained with 50 other men to a board with padlocks, collars around their necks, nigga. This is what they show black people. No, they just, a lot of these drawings is shit that was re, that was redrawn. And like I said, in some cases, some of them are descendants of of Slavic women but that's a whole nother story we talking about the images that they show you of them bringing people over here that's all some pseudo shit the people who was born here they telling you right here ship carriers white slaves to America often lost half their slaves they were they, they were chained with 50 other men on, to a board nigga with a padlock collar around their neck D the weeks of confinement below decks below the deck in the ship Stifling, holding, and offering resulted in out an outbreak of a contain contagious disease, in which I don't know what the exact contagious or bio bio uh, um biochemical that created these diseases, but I'm quite sure it had to come from human. It had to come from um some. It had to it, it, it had to come from even urination. Deprecation, people throwing up, people that close rubbing each other, uh, um, bacteria and all this other shit that, that came upon that, right? But nonetheless though, right? It says ships carrying white slaves to America often lost half their slaves to death. Now you stupid ass Pan-Africans, they tell you, oh, yeah, they, they had Negroes and they used to throw the Negroes overboard and the, the, the um sharks. If they was doing this, right? Look. If they was doing all this, while, while slaves transported to the colony suffered a staggering loss of life during what? The 17th and 1800s. Now, we go back here. Let me see, hold up. We go back here. Slavery in America, typically associated with blacks from Africa, was an enterprise that begun with shipping with shipping of more than three hundred thousand white Britons to the colonies, right? And it's what it's hold up. Look, it said around sixteen eighteen at the start of their colonial slave trade, the English began seizing and shipping to Virginia impoverished children, even toddlers from London slums. It says some impoverished parents saw a saw a better life. This is all suit bullshit though, but we already see what's going on, alright? 
Remember, they bought you. They said, so they said 1618, the first people was bought here was white people. And then 1619, they telling you that they bought Africans here, which but they didn't bring no Africans because Antonio Johnson wasn't part of no African. Um, They said that they came from the Caribbean. They said they came from the Caribbean. All right? So we got sources right here that's telling us other, other shit that we ain't never heard of, right? So we know that it wasn't just the 17 and the 1800s, right? As we see it right here. It wasn't just the 17th, 18th century. It was the, uh, well, the 17th century is the 16th century. And the 18th century is the 17th century, according to how they do it, right? Um, but just know this, right? They was chained with 50 other men to a board, nigga, with padlocks with padlock collars around their necks, nigga. Okay? Shipping white slave ship no ships carrying white slaves to America often lost half their slaves to death. According to historian Sharon, whatever the fuck her name is from California, Riverside, scattered data. Scattered data. Look, scattered data. Remember, scattered data. So you have to do what? You have to retrieve the data. And a lot of times they retrieve in the data, but they're they're coming with the mindset of Africans are the first people to be brought to this land, right? When it clearly says, and this is this is just this is some bullshit. This ain't even real research right here. But it clearly says what? Slavery in America, typically associated with blacks from Africa, was an enterprise that begun with shipping more than 300,000 whites to whites, Britons to the colonies, right? Now, keep this in mind for anybody who want to do research. If you remember back about maybe four or five years ago, slavevoid.org and these, these um, delusional Pan-Africans, they was making up to the claim, oh, they bought 300,000 um, Africans here. You lying motherfuckers, man. The gig is up, man. I'm sorry, the gig is up. This is for you Pan-African agents and you agents who think y'all scholars being taught by the general education system, right? This is for all of you niggas, man. It's for all of you niggas. So, let me see if there's something else. Let me, let me find something else to cherry pick. Eh, I think I'm concluded with this, man. This is a pretty lengthy bill. And remember this, too. I want to put this out here, too, right? <clears throat> American Indian slavery in, in the Carolinas, right? Went over this a couple of times. Just want to do, as they say, cherry pick, right? Now, look, it's saying often... No, I'm sorry. Our Native Americans was familiar with the with the low country landscape and they could often escape from the Carolina plantations. They could not easily escape from West Indy from the West Indian plantations. Other American Indians was held captured in um, Carolina by 1720. The Carolina census included the 1500 enslaved American Indians out of an estimate total population of 17,000. Right now look, like I said, man, there's so many different stories that they telling us, brother. We can easily go back to South Carolina and, and show and prove that there's Negroes. Plus, we can easily to them. I'm not saying none of this stuff. They're saying this, right? They saying it. They saying that the first 
slaves to come into North Carolina was white people. Okay? They, I'm not saying none of this shit. I'm just pulling up the information, showing and proving it. Okay? Let me see if there's anything else I want to go over. I mean, I got all this shit. White slavery. Eh. I think we pretty much went over enough information to where if anybody would like to like expound upon the information that was presented um you know please please feel freely to do so expound upon it if you can elaborate on it if you can find more resources to basically support it please elaborate on it, on this topic and please get this shit out there so we can change the history content consensus consensus to to making us not to, to at least showing that there are hundreds of thousand negro slave owners right and they even there are hundreds of thousands of negro slave owners and then you even get stories like let's go back into this Anthony Johnson was freed and he was given 250 acres on a plantation right by these so called devils right by these devils right so these devils was nice enough to give him 250 acres but in the meantime they burning your ancestors you know why they burning your ancestors because just like I just read in the forgotten cause of the civil war right even the person who reading in the forgotten cause of the civil war he didn't think that we was going to find the evidence showing that white people was already enslaved here so upon his his um bioptic view or his anal or his analytical view or the shit that he observed and the sources that he was able to derive in order to make this book he's putting a claim in that the reason that there was only the reason that white people was enslaved because they had African ancestors and we know that's not the case because we just read that the first people came here we just read all of that see so this right here but one thing he's telling us right one thing he is telling us one thing he is telling us as will be seen the political ramifications of white slavery was the ultimate cause of the civil war okay don't get, get that black blood out of there get all that shit because we already got evidence we already got evidence white people slaves we already got this we got this we got this and everything else i just fucking read you know what i'm saying we got this we got this and we got evidence of Negroes on the slaves, right? We got a whole lot of evidence of Negroes on the slaves. Matter of fact, you know what? These people, these people is generous to teach us about Antoine Bucklet, right? Once again, I got to keep on saying this shit. This shit has to be imprinted in people mental plane or in people mind to understand that none of this shit makes sense these are some lying motherfuckers who created history and created us to be the loser in history therefore that they can do what they doing to us now okay a wealthy man in fact he was widely regarded as one of the richest men in all of the south richer even than his white neighbors so what 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 prevented his white neighbors who did this to his ancestors in the 1900 what prevented them from doing that shit to him what prevented them from doing that to him hmm what prevented them from doing that to him right and what what devil in his right mind would get Anthony Johnson, uh, they would free him, right? Because according to Roots and Alex Haley, you was a slave, you was being whipped, you was never free, right? You, were, you, wasn't, you wasn't getting free or none of that shit, right? But this man got freed, so they went through the trouble of bringing him from Africa, right? And bringing him over here and then freeing him and then giving him a 200-acre plantation. So, so, I mean, it ain't saying 200 acres, it's saying a plantation, so there had to be an established plantation that they gave him already. So they ain't saying, oh, they, they, yeah, they gave him 200 acres of land, which he had to um, create his own plantation and farm. They saying that they gave this nigga a plantation. 
So go figure that. And also, what is they saying? Where he was masters over both black and which I don't even think they was black servants. Because at this point in time, what they telling you? Look, at this point in time, what they telling you? Look, 300,000 300, whites to the um, Britons to the colonies. Okay? Now look, it said the following, the following the, cult, the cultivation of 1613, an exception of tobacco crop in Virginia. The need for the labor accelerated. Slavery was viewed as the cheapest and most expend, expended way to providing the necessary workforce. Due to harsh working conditions, beating, starvation, disease, survival rates of slave rarely exceeded two years. Thus, the high level of demand was sustained and continuous flow of white slaves from England, Ireland, and Scotland from 1618 to 1775. So now we know that they was in Virginia. We know that they got shipped to Virginia. Of course, they telling us they got shipped to Virginia. So who was, so none of them got free. So look, look, so none of these people, right? Think of it like this too, right? So none of these white people, they said that these white people ain't, ain't survived that long. So how was Anthony Johnson able to survive? They saying that what? They said, um, and see, this is the bullshit for them thinking the, thinking that we're dumb, right? So it said, due to harsh working conditions, beating, starvation, <laughs> the diseases, survival rate of slaves rarely exceeded two years. So how did this man defeat slavery, right, in 1865, which is 1619, 1865, that sounds like what, 16 years? It's from 1619 to 8, 1635, 17 years. No, 16 years, right? So he survived 16 years later and was freed and was given a 250-acre plantation where he was master over, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not even going to say black people. I'm, I'm going to fuck all that. I'm not even going to say white servants. White servants, because there would have been more than enough of them, according to what these people telling us, Right? Even though that they said that they only lasted for two years, we know that's, that's that can't be true neither, right? They bought a they bought an ample amount of white white slaves over three hundred thousand nigga, and the numbers only exceed. The numbers get worse. The numbers get higher. The numbers get higher. The numbers get higher. They not said eighteen around sixteen eighteen. To start their colonial slave state, right? The colonial slave state. So to start the colonial slave state, they started with the Slavs, right? The English begin by seizing and shipping the Virginia impoverished children, even toddlers, from the London slums. So in 1618, before they bought Negroes here, the original slaves that was in where? Virginia, where the same place we find who? Anthony Johnson, right? We find Anthony Johnson, right? But not only do we find Anthony Johnson surviving the two years that they saying that he wasn't able to survive, they gave this nigga a 250 acre plantation where he went to be masters over white servants. Or, or, or I'm sorry, not servants, but slouches. So come on, man. We can't read none of this shit. These people, like I said, you, you have to take from what you know and make sense of any of this stuff. And make sense of it. Because like I said, Hannah Nicole Smith and the people at um the New York Times will have you think that, oh, yo, they bought us here. Yo, when you hear some of these black people or some of these so-called um, educated black people, that shit make me so mad, yo. Hearing some of them say the shit that they be saying to us. Or saying that the shit that they be saying about our history. And then when you bring up this, oh yeah, there was some black slave owners. Tell me how many. Tell me how many. Okay, once again, right? Back in here. <clears throat> in North Carolina, we see North Carolina had a very lengthy account of, and look, look, North Carolina had a very lengthy account of black slave owners, and so do South Carolina, look. We going to South Carolina for days. Look. For days. Matter of fact, you know what? 
Fuck this. Give me a second, y'all. Let me go. I gotta go. I gotta go do a, a Uno real quick. Just hold tight. I'll be right back. Alright, so I'm back. Alright, so I mean I didn't wanna I can pretty much cross reference and show you that all of these people saying that they have all of these so called Negro slaves in South Carolina, but we also can show you that they had Nig that they claim they had Indian slaves in South Carolina. And according to uh, this book, they also had white slaves who were the first slaves in North Carolina. So why is they not so conveniently telling us, oh, well, you do, do know that the first slaves in America was white people, right? Why are they not telling nobody that? What reason would they have to hide that? I wonder why. Oh, they just forgot it? They just forgot? And they left it up to a motherfucker who got seven felony convictions, who'd been in state prison, who used to be a um, purveyor of narcotics, and... um. I'm going to say a gentleman. I ain't no gangster, right? But I used to be a purveyor of narcotics who went on to get the enlightenment of the L's, right? So that I can make the proper adjustments and change myself from being a lower dimensional being to being a higher a higher being, dealing with the higher self, right? So they had to allow me with all these people. Now, like I said, I, I'm almost there with a master's degree, but I can turn that shit into a paper airplane my, my um diploma and fly that shit around the fucking room because there are some things in it that is you that's worth that you can get something out of it if you want to be one of their slaves also you know i do doing i do um have a couple businesses so that's something else i learned but nonetheless though right they had to allow me all these prominent black people who who out here with these pipes and these motherfucking bow ties talking to these Europeans all eloquent oh um you 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 do know um you know blacks was brought over here and we was put all this and white people just looking at them like yeah now nah, we I know my people was like that but if you want to if you want to take responsibility for that I'm not going to stop you I'm allow you to do it so look real quick before I get out of here right so this is in South Carolina, nigga. So you see the number of slaves. You see how many slaves these people own? Only just in South Carolina, right? Check this out. Just in South Carolina, right? 33, 13, 29, 19, 38, 23, 69 S.L. Simmons owned 69 slaves. J.J. Pringle owned 88. T.B. Seabrook owned 74, right? So I'm not going to go through all of the high numbers. But now here we got Benjamin Fuller. He owned 78, right? J.B. Lynch owned 64. Fanny Pinkley owned 80, 82. Right here, look, look. A. Middleton owned how many? 150 fucking slaves, nigga. And you think one none of these slaves white people? Like, that's what I say, man. Like, the, the, the nerve 
of some of these stupid ass niggas and these stupid ass Pan Africans who pull up articles or whatever and read everything verbatimly. Because if I was to think that the way the way these niggas think, then I would never be able to um, distinguish the truth from reality. Or, or, or I mean, the, the truth from fiction. Um, these niggas is still they they're still in the fictional land. They can't derive reality from fiction, right? So A A A Middleton, right? A Middleton had a hundred and fifty three fucking slaves, my dude. Look right here. Look, look. James Ferguson owned ninety nine slaves, right? Look. Catherine Edwards owned seventy three. All right. And this is all of Virginia. Patricia Byrne on 59. Right here. <clears throat> you like to support the channel. I put my Cash App link in the chat. Nobody is. Nobody has to donate or have to do um, anything for the channel. But if you like to. Um, my cash app link is in the description. Um, just want to put that out there, right? So look, you got Sophia Skinnings. She owned 163. 163. Now look, in the other article, when it was talking about um, Marie, right? Where we at? Oh, it's this one. Boom. to the top all right hold up oh check this out I didn't even go all the way in on this shit yo I'm bugging yo listen to this shit right here look so we still talk about Marie right so Marie so, um, it said Marie returned to France, right? Now, I say he, but she, right? Left behind all her possessions. However, Marie, now I guess Marie Therese, Therese was a wealthy woman by 1830. It's estimated that she owned more than a thousand acres with an estimate of 287 slaves working on the land, nigga. And remember, she was where? She was in Louisiana. You stupid motherfuckers, man. Like, st let's stop playing these games. 287 slaves, nigga. Imagine right now you own a business and you had 287 employees, nigga. You'll be that nigga. You'll be riding around like you'll be riding. Look, you'll be you'll be looking like this nigga right here. You'll be looking like Sir Solomon Jones, right? I love these videos, yo. I swear to God, boy, because these videos show and prove that these niggas who be writing this history is a bunch of fucking liars, right? Two hundred and eighty-seven slaves, man. Come on, what white, what, what white person? You think these motherfuckers right here? Look, let's wait for it to load up. So look, so if you owe two hundred eighty-seven slaves back then, you was rolling like this, man. I ain't saying that these slaves, these are people who are free, right? And even when you see these people, these people look like they don't, they don't know nothing about no slavery, man. These people look so happy. They got so much joy in their eyes. These people look like they never heard of slavery. All of them got cars. So how was these people impoverished, right? How was they impoverished, right? Look. These motherfuckers look like they they don't know nothing about no slave, about being no indentured servant, about nothing, right? Do these people look like they scared of the white man? Look.
Do they look like they scared of any white man? Do you see any white man around them controlling them? Now, this is in Oklahoma, right? Look, these people look like they never, ever, 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 ever. Look, Muskegee, Oklahoma, once again, right? We revisit Muskegee. Look, look at this brother right here. Where did he get class like this from? So he went to etiquette schools of Europeans to learn how to dress like this? So he can dress like Bumpy Johnson. Now look. Look. Like they worry about no white man coming. Look. Look how they rolling. And then when we see this right here, right? We see this right here, boom. Then we going back into this shit right here, right? Look. Between 1861 and 1865, American Civil War prison camps was operated by the Union and Confederacy to detain over 400,000, hold up, over 400,000 captured soldiers, right? <laughs> they lying, motherfucker. Half of these people were the people who was freed after the Civil War. They are all types of numbers down here. Records indicate that the captors of 211,411 Union soldiers was 16,666 paroled and 30,218 died in captivity of the um, Confederate soldiers. 462,684 was captured, 247,769 paroled, and 25,976 died in captivity. Just over 12% 12, 12 of the captors in, North, in the northern prison died, compared to 15% of the southern population. Now, I can go deeper in this, and when I get time, we're going to go, and we're going to look at these, these so-called um, concentration camps that was all through America. You don't see no Negroes living in none of them, right? But you see white people, and like I said, look, this ain't about no racism. This ain't about nobody sitting up here being a bigot um, or anything. I'm more concerned about the lies that we was taught in history whether you was white whether you was a negro who was enslaved it's all wrong but then again we have to kind of look at it too from the other angle a lot of these people was employed a lot of these people came here and they lived along these plantations and their job was to, to, to be the farmer or to work along the plantation right but at the same token right at the same token, they got them camps, right? We see this. We see this. There ain't no sound to it, so don't even worry about the sound. Just know you seeing it. We don't have to hear nothing they saying. That nigga probably like, yeah, I got 50 million in the bank. But we ain't going to hear it, though, but... We can kind of, we could kind of assume, where's these poor Negroes getting all this money from? Oh, the Sarah Rector story of the Rockefellers giving her all this money to buy the land that was in Oklahoma. No, that oil was all, we was already using that oil. They was the ones who decided to go into the business that we was doing. And this is what led to Tulsa, Oklahoma, what led to the Bowleys. Because the Bowleys in here, they got ran off their land after this. So these people, look, 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 this shit right here, right here, look, that, that shit dope right there, bro. Look, this shit is the equivalent to a Mercedes-Benz coupe, nigga, a 600, nigga. It might be a motherfucking, um, a Mercedes GT, the new shit. The shit look like the Courageous Catmobile, right? So this, this vehicle that this man just pulled up in is, is the, um, is, is similar to having a motherfucking Aston Martin, a fucking... 600 Mercedes Benz Coupe, maybe might be a 850 four door or M850, whatever you want to say. But that right there, the stylish car back in them days, okay? Well, we're gonna get back into Mary 287 Slaves. I ain't forget that shit, need Look at this shit. 
Same houses niggas live in now. Oh shit, this nigga got a gun. A Negro with a gun? Oh shit. Oh shit, a Negro with a gun. Wow. This nigga got glasses and everything. Not Muskogee, Oklahoma. They making sure that they 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 making sure that they specify that they're in Muskogee, Oklahoma. Look, they got horses. Look, look at this shit. Is that nigga on a horse? There's two niggas on horses with the finest suits ever made. And nigga look like he got some boots on, like some type of um three-quarter style boots and shit. Man, man, man boots. Look at this shit. This shit is this shit is amazing, my dude. Well, we'll get into this another though. Look, look, look at this. No, oh, look, these niggas are do you think these are about the white man coming and lynch them? Look, look at this big ass house he got. So the white man taught him how to build this house, I assume, right? We got a barn, a, a, a fucking dry, a, um, a fucking garage, barn on the other side. Look at this shit right here, man. Baby Jane. Muskokie, Oklahoma, once again. <laughs> Look, got the baby, got the little baby on a horse. Look at this. He got a pit. That's a pit bull, yo. Yo, they got a pit bull right there. Hold up, let me see, sorry. Look, they got a pit. That's a pit. He ain't got no tail, neither. <laughs> she come out the Look at this shit. So you goddamn well, look, getting another one of them whips. Like I said, this is equivalent to driving fucking 600, uh, um, what's that, a S, the S class? The S class is the big one. Driving the S 600, nigga. Look at this shit, look at that shit right there. She got a cape on. Look at this shit. You think these people heard of slavery before? I don't think so. Look, and these are the schools that we was going to, right? They just coming out of school, right? And as you notice, there's no white person coming out te as the teacher, nigga. We had our own, own school, nigga. The case system to what? Our minds to keep us docile. Prior to being docile, this is what we had. When they realized none of that shit can work or whatever, then they start to implement the fucking drugs into our community. Look. Look at this shit right here. Come on now. Don't none of these people look poor. Don't none of them look poor. poor. Don't none of them look uh, underprivileged. Don't. Look at this shit. That's a coupe. That's a Converti right there too. He could take that shit down. That's the type of shit that um um Jack Johnson was riding around with them Slavic women, man. Look at this shit. They doing their own work. Look, they they. they Shit right here, my dude. This shit. That's a funny thing, right? <clears throat> like I keep on saying, like right, right down the block from where my daughter lives at, there's some Mexicans building a house, nigga. Like, and I see that. I see that. I've, I've seen that a lot. But like, I just stop by and I look at them building a the house, and I'll be like, yo, I wish my niggas 
can get back into what we was doing prior to thinking we drug dealers and thinking we gangsters and thinking we just want to be rappers and entertainers or whatever. But this is how our people was living. And out of them, you still got entertainers and singers, but they I bet you that them motherfuckers knew some form of carpentry or some form of electrician or some type of trade, right? If not all of the trades, right? Drug stores, look, with glass and shit like that. I mean, come on now. Oh, hold on, look, look, this nigga. A whole building. And remember what they, remember, look. So that was a drugstore. Right? Who works in a drugstore? A pharmacist, right? Look, what was Mary? I mean, um, Mary, she was she was trained in nursing and then pharmacy. Right? Drug stores, right? But who was who was who was educating them? We was educating our own people, just like you seen them kids come out of class right there, right? So once again, let's go back over this again. It's saying Therese was a wealthy woman. By 1830, it is estimated that she owned, by 1830, nigga, it's estimated that she owned more than a thousand acres with an estimate of 287 slaves working the land, nigga, working the land, nigga. What's she saying? Hey man, very interesting, right? Very interesting. Very. Well, we know exactly what this shit is about, y'all. So when these people, and like I said, your own people come along, they send these agents over here or whatever, but two agents ain't getting no motherfucking, um, even when I drop the link, before I get out, I go pick my daughter up. You niggas ain't coming up here. Because I don't even want to hear nothing you got to say. Nothing. So, I'm going to drop the link in a minute. Um, just give me a second. We'll go back over it once again. So, Sophia Skinning in South Carolina. We still in South Carolina. She owned 163 slaves, man. Okay. Another brother right here. LP Golf. Oh, and he this is a estate, nigga. Est look. S-T-A, I mean S-T-A, E-S-T-A, I'm sorry, estate, nigga, 69, nigga, right here, look, Ann A. Hutchin, she on 89 slaves, Paul S. H. Lee, which my, my, my father's side of his family is the Lees, right, so, and my father's from Macon, Georgia, South Carolina, Florida region, right, um, M. H. Neil, nearly 77 slaves, nigga. Nathan, 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 G. Carry, Carry, owned 69 slaves, nigga. R. Thompson Smith owned 74 slaves, nigga. Look, J. G. Scott on 81, right? W M R R Crum R Crum on 112, Alex English on 82. So I mean I so I don't know what the fuck y'all watching over here. Look, in a in Haywood, and he got two places right here according to what they got highlighted right here right or in parentheses right. He on 106 slaves, nigga. Look, and we gonna get, oh it gets better. Look at this. W.M. Washington, estate, nigga, E-S-T, nigga, which is an estate. Oh, shit. Hold on one second, y'all, it's business. Hey, my brother, what's up, brother? I'm doing splendid. Hey, could you do me a favor? Let me call you back in 10 minutes. I'm actually in the middle of something. I'm going to give you a call right back. All right. All right, all right, no problem, no problem. I'll speak to you, man. All right, peace. All right.
right, sorry about that. All right, so look, W.M. Washington, nigga, in South Carolina. Now, remember, so South Carolina was the racist state. They had all of these black slaves. and the fuck out of here, man. Who, who, who are you niggas wide listening to? Not a coincidence. And this, what's the other clown name? Um, um, YK the Lie? And, and uh, Rob Bourne and all of these niggas. All of these, we, 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 where are, we are these people teachers. These people are students. These people shouldn't be allowed to speak. Even if they raise their hand and ask to speak. Like, nah, you ain't learned nothing yet. We don't, you know, we gonna give you, you need some more time of silence, nigga. Because you niggas ain't learned nothing. Right? This nigga owned 167 slaves right here. Over here on the other side, William Adamson. 140. Look, Zach Canton, estate, nigga, EST. He owned 182 slaves, nigga. Estate, ESTA. Jeremiah Miles, 109. John V. Ash, 114, nigga. Look. John John Teller, 134. Oh, white people were so, they were so racist. They would never allow, the fuck out of here. Thomas Gate, 101. Look, <laughs> W.M. Clarkson, 137. Estate of Joel Adam, right? Senior, 104. Estate of Joel Howell, I don't know, J, it say J-N-O, I don't know what the fuck abbreviation that is. 74, right? Estate of Scott, 124. S. Green Plantation, 51. Right, look. I go back on this side. Andrew Milne, Mil, Mil, I guess that's how you put it up. Mound, Main, Main, 120, right? Estate of Jenkin, Jenkin. 125, right? John McCord Estate, 95. 95 slaves. Now, we're in South Carolina, y'all. We're in South Carolina, nigga. So, all these plantations, oh, black people was working on these plantations. The fuck out of here, man. With the pseudo ass history, right? Look. Damn, look, look at this shit right here, look. So, St. Matthew um, Parish, right? Robert Singleton, slave, St. Matthew Pat um, Parish, is saying true, true blue plantation. This nigga owned 204 slaves right here, y'all. You can't make this shit up, man. Look, 204 right here. My friend, let, me hold on. Let, me, let me make sure we good here. Let me, let me open up a little bit more for you guys so you guys can get the exact picture. All right, so let's get back into it. Shout out to how many people we got? A hundred, over a hundred something. Hit the like button, please. And like I said, if you like to donate to the channel, uh, let me see. Shit. It's my cash app on the screen. So let's continue. All right, let's get back into it. So look, this nigga owned 204 slaves, nigga. Explain this one to me. Oh, yeah, yeah the, the white man let him. Yeah, all right. Look, so we go over here. Look, the plantation. So every time they, you hear about plantation, people get this post-traumatic stress syndrome about white people beating them and white people doing all this. We just read about the young lady, um, bless her soul, that got 500 lashes, nigga. 500 lashes for running away, nigga. Right? So look. The plantation of James S. Dare. This nigga owned 155 slaves right here. Boom. 155. It's state of RL Champion. 188 slaves. And like I said, for people who got businesses, visualize you having 204 fucking um 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 employees. Visualize that. I got a business. I got eight employees. So visualize you having 204 fucking employees, nigga. Visualize that, nigga. Got 90 down here. 155 right here. 188. Look, look at this shit right here, nigga. Look. 
Feast your eyes on this, you slaves. Look. Check this out. Look. I'm going to blow it up big for y'all, too. Look. The estate of John Singleton, nigga. Look, John Singleton. Remember, John Singleton was the director. So he might be descendants. If I go back and look and see if John Singleton family come from come from South Carolina, then more than likely he was related to these people, right? Let's check this out. 310, nigga. Look. 310. Three, so the estate of John Singleton owned 310 slaves, nigga. Three hundred and ten. And look, I ain't even go to Louisiana. I might do a part two sometime. I don't know. Probably tomorrow, man. I'm waiting for my truck to get fixed. I put a transmission in it um about a month ago. The transmission he gave me was bad. So now I gotta go right back through the process again. That's the reason why I'm I'm able to do some bills. Um but for the most part <clears throat> I probably do that one tomorrow if I got the time. But man, this shit, this, this shit is um extraordinary, man. This is some amazing shit right here, man. Three hundred and ten slaves, nigga. So now I see anything like I mean, shit. I don't, I don't know what to say at this point in time, nigga. So y'all, Richard Plink, Pick Pick Picker Pick Pick Pickering. Pickering is saying, and Colonel Meyer, I guess the CLL stand for Colonel, right? 121 slaves, nigga. Over here, you got 70. You got the estate of Eli McFadden, 73. You got the plantation of Charles D. Brown, 82. You got Francis Cordes, Cordes, he got 87, right? 54, 52. Let me see. I think that's the end of that. Let's go on Louisiana real quick. Fuck it. Oh, yeah. It's South Carolina. Damn, so South Carolina probably had the, they probably had the most, like, 310 is some crazy, a crazy fucking number, man. And you want me to believe one none of them white people, right? This stupid nigga, not a coincidence. Oh, none of them was white people. They saying that they, I don't care what Carter G. Woodson at this point in time saying. I'm looking at the other evidence that support that it was white slaves, that white people was being held slave. But the. These niggas that go back and shit and say, well, no, um, I'm sorry, we was wrong. They wasn't able to own um, so-called white slaves, right? You know what? I think this is the second book, too. Let me see. So, yeah. All right, so let me see something. Ah, shit. Let me go all the way back to the top. Do it again. Let me see Alabama. Okay, let me see. Nah. No, let me see if this. Okay, all right. So this is a real Louisiana right here. So let's look through here. Let's see how many slaves they got in here, and then I open up the what's the name for? Get out of here before two thirty. So let's see. Because Louisiana is very lengthy. Very lengthy. It's like 12 pages. At this point in time, we're looking for anything over 100.
Because I know Marie should be in here as well. I don't think no other state had, I mean, had slavery in large numbers like fucking South Carolina. South Carolina, them numbers is crazy. Yeah, these numbers ain't as heavy as Louisiana. I mean, South Carolina. South Carolina had the heaviest fucking numbers. All right. So, that pretty much concludes the presentation part of the bill. Um, so, I'm going to drop the link for anybody who may want to come through. Peace of the gods. Peace of the goddesses. I don't know how long I've been rocking. Let me see how long I've been rocking out. Damn, four hours? God damn. And I'm gonna edit it. I gotta put the L in the slave, so I ain't forget. So, So the link is in the description. I mean, the link is in the chat. I see that motherfucking chat moving fast in the motherfucker. God damn. See, some of these niggas that be in the chat room with these contentions, they're here to program y'all. They're here to tell y'all who y'all not. These niggas ain't your friend. These niggas ain't with us. And like I said, at the end of the day, they have to be treated accordingly. Because even a white man is sitting up in here telling us that we was here. But these niggas have to be treated accordingly, man. Period. Yeah, these niggas is clowns, man, at the end of the day, man. But I once again, I'm going to put the link back in the chat room if anybody want to come through. Um, if not, I'm about to shut it down. Um, so you got Pan-African is dead. Shout out to my brother, Supreme Chief Holiday. Um, that's going to be 331. Probably, that's going to be tomorrow. Tickets is on sale now. Um, hold up. You know what? Hold up. Let me see something. You can send that to app, AP Cash App or PayPal at ZellyTheDon at gmail.com. Um, the description is in the link. No, it's in the chat room. I guess we ain't got no questions and shit. I guess I'm about to get up out of here. Peace of the gods, man. Peace of the goddesses, man. We got to stay away from these motherfuckers. These niggas is crazy. Guess ain't nobody got nothing to say. Nobody wanna got nothing to build on. 
I'm about to get out of here, man. If anybody want to hit the link, I got like 35 minutes before I go pick my daughter up. Um, but yeah, you got to definitely, man. Look, man, you, you already know. You already know how it is. You already know. Say, what was the name of the song you played earlier? That was um, Crown of the Omec by Sid Duca Tiz and his wife, um, Selena Cadoba. That was that one. And the other one was done by, the other one was Invaders by Meets, Meets the Shredder. The song is called The Invaders. Ah, oh, man. I'm just reading the chat room. Let me see. I mean, look, y'all seen it, man. We, look, come on now. We seen it. Yeah. We seen it. Tons of Virginia tobacco and Indian companies. Yeah, man. Yeah. Now, I see I've been making um music. He used to be down with, um, what the fuck is my man name? Um, Queen of Four Son. Um, what the fuck is Queen of Four Son name? I can't think of that nigga name right now. Nigga went to the army and shit when he joined the military. But um, yeah, they used to be doing music back in the day. Okay, we got a couple people up in here. Peace of the gods, peace of the goddesses. We got my brother Supreme Chief. We got brother Chris Williams. What's good? What's good? What's up, A1? Peace of the God, man. Man, I stay watching your, your your stuff, man. I like it. I like all the videos. I like, I like how you even how you put how you word things, you know. But I got a couple questions. How how you feel about them saying we ain't read or write? We was illiterate, but we got all these inventions and stuff. Like it just don't make sense to me, bro. That's it. it, it listen, listen, my dude. It's perfectly fine to have these contention points. So don't think you crazy or whatever. It's perfectly fine, my dude. Like, yeah. it's perfectly fine. That, that means you're a sentient being and your mind is not being um, molded by this by this general education system. You understand what I'm saying? Like, how, how we yeah. not reading and writing? You get, we, I just showed you. Now, I'm not saying you, but according to the people who say that. We get seen we had schools. That's what I'm saying militaries and all this shit so the white man taught us so they had a curriculum in which the white man taught you and then we followed it no we already had at, uh, astronomy cosmology geometry how you gonna bring africans from another land who speak african right and then you bring them over here and just you make them do all the work and they don't know how to even speak your language for one they don't know nothing about this land over here that don't make no sense they had to already be here Dude, these are some lying motherfuckers, money grip. How you gonna bring an African and bring him over here and he just doing tobacco work, cotton work, coming up with inventions? That don't make no sense to me. Bro. And it, it, see, it only gets worse, man. Because, you know, when you connect all of this history and you look at the inventions and you look at the tech, the technical things we had dealing with technology, some of thousands of according to them, man. We don't know. This shit could be a hundred thousand years old. We don't know. The airplane could be a million years old. We don't know. Yeah. You know, you just know, like, we don't like, just like they took the credit off of uh, Lewis Latimer and gave the Edison. It's crazy See? what they do. No. Yep. Like patents. They've been stealing. That's crazy. Yep. <laughs> Another brother. Peace of the guys, man. Peace, oh, Chief man. Billy. Got What's going on, brother? Holiday up in the building. Peace of the guys, man. Arnold. Peace, brother. Uh, I think he said Chris Williams. Yeah, how you doing? I can't, I can't see the other brother's name right there. Peace, brother. Uh, Theodore. Theodore, yeah. what up? Hey, now, brother. How you be, man? What's that? Breach run? Breach breeding? Breeding? Braydon. Braydon, okay. He's Irish. No, nah, I don't hmm. no doubt, brother. No doubt. That for all we know, the Irish people may have got that name from your people. You know what I'm saying? Well, so, I mean, it's a possibility, bro. It's a possibility. I'm still searching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Don't let even when you're doing your genealogy, don't let these people even try to tell you, oh, these names come from over in Europe. If the people that came in Europe was able to come and set up shop along us they had to be part of our society 
but people don't think of us of having a society or having an international trade system where our, where your people was doing business all around the fucking world. You know what I'm saying? They don't. We don't. We don't because we, we're not taught that. We taught Indians was primitive. Yeah, they don't teach us nothing like that. You see what I'm saying? That's true. They say that all oh, the Indians was one with each other. We came and civilized them. Bro, how all how how's, how's people warring when all of the history of slave on you got all these slave on? So why is they not getting touched? Why is they just chilling and living in the same areas for hundreds of years? That's what I'm saying. Oh, no, but I know well, you on fire today. I, 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 I'm just saying though, people don't have a what it's called like not ad math. One plus one is not fifteen. Like you know what I mean? Like we could just go a hundred years ago. What condition? We were our, our ancestors is just a hundred years ago. That's not too long ago. It's still people that's alive from a hundred years ago. You understand what I'm saying? So they absolutely right. know what was going on a hundred years ago. We know what was going on a hundred years ago, right? That's shit that we could prove. Now we know there's things that's been changed for us narratives, but we understand that we could trace a hundred years ago and understand what got changed. You know what I mean? And we talking economics, we're talking land ownership. Within that hundred years, we lost millions of acres. Of land ownership. Now, in an archaeo in a in a agricultural society, land ownership is king, right? So now we're talking about who are the landowners. It's on record who are the goddamn landowners a hundred years ago, y'all. So a lot of times when they're talking about Jim Crow, Jim Crow is not in even in, even if there was a slave. I wholeheartedly, as it pertains to the American Negro, say slavery is fake. We are not slaves. It's not white slaves. It's just slaves, slobs, slaves, slobs. No white slaves, green slaves, slobs, slaves. That's how that works. So when you say it's a black slave, now you're putting a, a, a you, you're, you're covering up right. history. You know what I mean? And so I don't care about their narratives. I don't care about their slave narratives because we don't have a slave. When you do research in your own, your family, not mine, not, not A1's, your family, just search for who, who owned you. You're going to only see you're, you're, you're connected to this land and your own bloodline. Now, within that, pale people came within our bloodlines. It's not, they didn't own us. Now, unless a man was fortunate enough to marry within our families, right? Now he has a wife. And now she's enslaved and his children are enslaved to them. But within that process, uh, hey, bro, it's like, how about this? <clears throat> You own land, you own, and you have daughters. Yo, you gonna let a bum marry your daughter? Like, oh, what is no. <laughs> what is he gonna bring to the table? You know what right. I mean? You're not like he's not bringing anything to the table. But we married, you know what I'm saying? Hey, this person married somebody in this farm over here. Now our families are are, are, are strengthening because we're we're merging through blood, y'all. This is not so fucking you're slavery. You saying that's how they stole our land by marriage? What, what are you saying here? Well, well a lot of part them, absolutely. Of it, part of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's part of it. But that's not true, part most of it. they married their mm -hmm. way. They, I think but they, they didn't, they didn't conquer and kill and rape us. laws and everything. That's why they, they capitalized off our own warfare amongst each other, though, bro. It's a declaration. It took them 1776. Years, but it's seven, years, feel, feel me on this right here. Wasn't no pale people here in 1776 fighting doing shit to us. It's it's us fighting against each other. That's facts. That's okay. Fact. The, the, the whole narrative is that they, they, they were over us and that they were the the Continental Congress and then overnight, well, we no, were the Continental Congress and overnight it changed to them. Nothing. Come on, y'all. We are African Americans and Native Americans, and and now it's if, if it's African Americans and Native Americans, who are the Americans? Okay, Real well talk. if that's the case, then who are the that Germans? <laughs> who are the Dutch? Okay. Right. Oh. But then they tell us a whole other story in fifteen hundreds that France existed, Spain existed. So it's a Spanish Empire that ruled over us in America. Now think about this, right? Think about this for just. When y'all say shit don't make sense, right? It's niggas over here. We're powerful. We're, we're full. We've been building for thousands of years. Civilizations, right? We're trading. We're doing good over here, right? right. Are we going to let some dusty, broke motherfuckers tell us what we're doing over here? That don't even make... That's a European No, we're not going to let them. Fantasy, bro. It's like... Try. It's no, try they where? Did. They ain't tried us, fam. They ain't tried. They ain't got... Bro, bro they ain't got on the boats unless they, they was got captured and rounded up. You. 
Unless somebody hog tied the ass, bro, they was not coming over nah, here doing you, shit hey, to us, bro. Real quick, real quick. That's what I'm know, saying. Real quick. You know what happened? Period. What What happened was after they was freed after the Civil War. That's the whole reason why I brought up all yeah. the lynchings. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, well, we just talking about the 1500s. Like, no, 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 no. We, we, yeah. in the 1500s, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they well, all we in power after the Civil War. What, 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 was we in was in were we in power before the Civil War? Exactly. exactly. That's just dumb. That only makes sense. It's dumb, mm -hmm. dumb, dumb. Right? These people didn't come in here to the millions until after 1870, 1880, 1890, 1910, 1920. And what is so interesting? What was the first war that they implemented the draft? Hmm, let's was that that world, world, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't the Civil War. No, I don't hold on. What did the Civil War? I don't even know. I got I thought it was the Civil War. I think I wanted to say the Civil Nine. War. Nine. Nine. We fought for our land as free men. That's a whole lie. Oh, the slaves. Man, come on, fam. There's no paperwork, nothing. They don't have nothing but a narrative that's created by Germans. France didn't exist. Spain didn't exist to even be selling shit to, to America. What? We're selling shit to... Uh, how about we're going to have somebody sell our land to us. Does that make sense? Where's, where's the purchase order? There? How, who gave them the authority? So if this illusion of discovery and, 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 and conquest is, is, is fake, it's not on paper. It's, it is only exists in your goddamn mind, brothers and sisters. That's it. Mm -hmm. And what Correct. we gonna do tomorrow night, y'all? This motherfucking uh, death of Pan Africanism, man. Hey, y'all. I promise y'all, it shouldn't be no more conversation if y'all haven't got y'all tickets for this, bro. It's gonna be crazy tomorrow night. Shout out to Sister Soul. Shout out to Sister yeah. Becky. Y'all know AP gonna be I bringing some heat. We got some shit y'all ain't never heard before, though. huh? I, it's I, going I, down, I, bro. I, I, they're going I, in the dirt. Huh? I, <laughs> Africans ain't African. How about that? I don't know. This what is they embarrassing. Are. I know I yeah. that, whatever they are. I know that. Well, I'm just saying it's embarrassing, bro, for us to not. Our oral tradition doesn't count. Af people from the continent of so called African oral traditions, Asian oral traditions, Arabs have oral traditions. Everybody has oral traditions but us, right? Here in America. See what I'm saying? See how that works? Hey, I heard that gang of was like black. That? It, it doesn't make any other sense but for him. If everybody else in that time period, in that, eight, in that area, we're niggas, according to archaeology, right? right. According to math and science. It's just, if the logic should say that the ruler of the people is, is them, right? Was he a Han? Yeah, with Genghis Khan yeah. or something like that. They said he was black. Oh, okay. Well, he never called himself Genghis or Khan. No, that's just... New German shit. Yeah, come on, y'all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, a lot of times they talk about the when they describing these people, it, it comes within the names that they're even giving them. See what I'm saying? Or what the people describe them as and stuff like that. It's just dumb. The archaeology in that time says niggas in this time period. It's niggas in Europe in this time. So it's not. Don't how how to, is it? Uh, record the history right. Well, I mean, it's about they they recording it after they burnt it down and they came back and wrote it the way they wanted to record it, the way they wanted Why? to put the narrative. That's what that, that, that that happened. Hey, that, hey, that hey, hey, look, Mike, 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 check, Mike, check, real quick, fellas. You got it, let's, let's sit here and visualize. No, what up? So let peace to God, nonetheless, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, give you the mic, um, right after I'm done. Check this out, right? So let's visualize this, right? So you know, Hannah Nicole Smith. And the people at um, the New York Times, right, along with these other so-called Negro leaders and these people that's part of these boulets and these secret societies and these fraternity organizations, right, they all subscribe to the same fucking story because they being, they being persuaded to have us believe that shit, right? But check this out. So they tell you the story of 1619, right? But in 1618, these Europeans, I just pulled four sources up where they said that in, in 1618, the first people to come here were slaves. So then you make a story up in 1619 talking about you were Africans here? The fuck out of here. <laughs> like, like, this is what I'm saying. Like, come on, bro. Like, we got to sit here and be, like, be, be. And then, and then the 1619 story, one of the, look, look, look. The 16, all of the other slaves, they saying that they bought here die from diseases. Their, their um, life expectancy. Damn, 
famine was only two years, nigga. Anthony Johnson, I, 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 he, I, look, Anthony Johnson, who would have been under the same conditions that they claim, which we know that he wasn't, but if you let them tell a story, we have to say, all right, well, so he would have been under the same condition. How the fuck he make it 17 years later? And then these people were so generous to get this nigga 200, a 250-acre plantation? That part. Where, where he was able to yeah, own white part. slaves? Where he, was, where he was able to own white slaves? Right. Say, Come on, bro. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> like... You know, at some point yeah, in time, yeah. you just got to kind of be like, man, wait a minute. We investigators, my dude. When you hear some shit, like you, like, look, everybody done been somewhere, right? Where we just been chilling, right? We looking at the shit from the horizon. Now, you done been somewhere chilling, and you already see something unfold. And before you know the complete story, your mind is already, you're already peeping the shit out. You're like, damn, this nigga about to rob that nigga. Oh, these niggas about to do this. And then right. that shit happened. We done all been somewhere where we seen that where your intuition kicked in and gave you, uh, uh, um, gave you um, how they say, um, psychic abilities or we able to see into the lie because the shit just don't make sense. And, and, and it's right. not, the shit that we learning that don't make sense is the shit that they're not teaching nobody that they can sell it and we have to ask ourselves, well, wait a minute, man. How can white people rule you if we found out they were slaves and all of the hardships that they was going through and then you find out that, one, oh, one of your slave owners, or one, one black slave owner had 310 slaves? Yeah. Yeah, you, what's the name of that book, man, that, that you, um, that source from? Peace to the God. Peace, peace, peace. Um, that's um Carter G. Wilson. That's the 1830 Negro slave on. I don't know how to send that shit, bro, because every time I send it, like, it's saved to my computer. But if you go on Internet Archives, right, go on Internet uh -huh. Ar Go on internet archives and put um a um Carter G. Wilson 1830 slave owners. When it comes up, click on it. It's gonna go to the screen where the book gonna open up at, right? On uh shit, you know what? Yeah, I got that joint too. That that book don't really have too much um reading it. It's all right. It's all mainly those records. Yes. Yeah, it's real. It's a real cool source, man. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying. Like, come on, man. We said everybody sitting up there. We know the history that they teach us and the history that they don't teach us. So you. So okay. All right. So you, why you not telling me a, a Negro own? 310 slaves. And why you not telling me about the other one that owned 287 slaves? Right. But then wait. Yeah. You that shit. I'm like, wow. Come on, fellas. Like, we gotta, man, we not, none of us, was, we was born on the day we just wasn't born yesterday. So it's right. like, you know what I'm saying? So like, come yeah, on, so, money grip. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, why you gonna sit here and pull this one on me, man? Like, you know how a motherfucker try to get over you, try to get over on you, and it should have just so blatant it. So you be like, you, you got to laugh at a motherfucker. Like, yo, you really going to try that shit on me, bro? Right, right, right. But <laughs> like, yo, you really... Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Right. No, no, let's go ahead. Yo, real quick, the, um, the thing about Anthony Johnson, and while Anthony Johnson was really a cherry-pick, one of the cherry-pick brothers that... You see all those slave owners, right? But they why did they cherry-pick um, Certain Anthony ones. Johnson, Certain ones, right? though. But, but I'm going to give them the reason why why Anthony Johnson, they, they kind of use him because, remember, he was the first one to put these crackers in perpetual slavery when he went to court and tried to get to get, get them to be slaves longer than their, con their indentured service contracts were, right? So, yeah. remember, they had a deal where they, was, they would be freed after a certain amount of time, right? Let's say seven years. Anthony Johnson went to court and tried to get his slave, his his worker, to stay in servitude with for him longer, and won. So, was that a Negro slave, or do you think that was a white slave? It was a white slave, brother. Exactly. It, it, it was, but but remember though, the court that he went to was was made by us. So it was other right. Negroes in it. it. wasn't white people, and it was us. Right. Right. But That's they kind of said. use that, though. They, they use that court case as president, though, to keep people in slavery. You see yeah. what I'm saying? That's why they like him. That's why I went over that Virginia <laughs> Indian slavery, right, where they was where they was telling you the um, descriptions and they was giving you the complexions of them. And they kept saying, oh, he, he was an Indian or whatever. So who is his mother? Who, who, who their mother? Oh, their mother's a South? Or it's like, like it's right. just...
Like, come on, man. Like, let's stop playing, man. The gig is up. And, and see, the thing of it is, is this too, right? The people who just don't get it, like some of these clowns that be in a, a chat room that keep on promoting this nonsense, right? Them are the people we just got to kind of stay the fuck away from, bro. Because it, it's not, like, it, it's not helping me to sit up here and explain some shit that you ain't get yet. So why am I going to still, why am I, why am I going to be, um... Why I'm going to keep taking up the task of trying to free you from the Matrix and you don't want to accept it? Well, okay, well I, 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 believe that, I believe that you guys have done you all part in that regard. It just Some people are just not going to accept it for the, financial reasons. Some of these niggas is agents, you know? nigga that's getting paid I mean, around exactly. the clock. Some you know, of them so. paid around the clock, nigga. Donnie, real live Donnie Brasco's. Like, real yeah, talk. Real talk. You know what I'm saying? Like real, like we don't see. Look, if these people will go through all of this to conceal your whole history, tell you that you came from Africa when we already know that was black people here, and we already know that they ain't bring no Africans here. Everybody that they call Africans are now saying that they Indians, right? That's ironic. Oh, okay, okay all right. So you're an Indian? Oh, cause they may have, been, <laughs> bro. There was no whole African towns here. They would have integrated with the people of the land. If, if, if we warn amongst each other, you think motherfuckers who was just living freely like that along among the land who wasn't part of none of these tribes or couldn't, like, remember, think of it now, right? When you go somewhere, right, when they tell you, like, this whole check-in shit that these clowns be doing, a lot of times that ain't, that check-in is only like, yeah, get with my brothers when you come to my city or whatever so we can look after you. In some cases, in some cases, them niggas will get you killed, but that's a whole nother story, right? But so, right. when I go somewhere, right? Let's say I come to one of your town, or I, let's say I, um, I, I reach out. I'm, I'm going to um, motherfucking Las Vegas. I'm going to hit my. I'm going to hit my um, chief Billy Goat up. Yo, I'm in Vegas, nigga. I just touched down, man. Meet me at the airport. Boom. You understand what I'm saying? Like, so it's like you know, you think that people was just living free, like oh, they just freed them off the plantation, and now he live in a whole, he live in an Indian um, town. No, it didn't work that way. It didn't work that way. And for anybody to, to, to anybody to believe that shit, like oh, it's just people pulling up all over the place and doing this and doing you, all of this shit is a lie. The people that's coming back was already connected to the empire, and they're being followed by Romans or, or not Romans, but but more Moors or Negroes that once was part of the empire who now converted into Catholicism, and now they're trying to put everybody under. Cantharioism. Now they trying to conquer everything, and this is where you get some of these wars. War, war, boom, boom, boom. You know they freed the white slaves to cause confusion. When they freed them and allowed them to run chaos or, or, among our towns, it's the reason why they running into these towns in the 1900s. Cause they was homeless. They was eating fucking um potatoes and porridge. Well, your people got a fat duck on the um, table, nigga. You got a fat duck with the head still on it, nigga. Glazed in some honey, nigga. Probably some, probably motherfucking, probably had some um, orange juice. Mixed some honey, nigga, and glazed that motherfucking turkey, nigga. Uh, um, what we call that? <laughs> duck, duck a la rhymes, right? <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Make a, 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 um, a um, a la rhymes sauce out of triple sec, triple sec orange liqueur, right? So... You know, they, they look, like I said, they looking in the window, right? They see the whole family in a big-ass table like a buffet or one you see at a gala, right? Whole table with all fucking cornucopia, motherfucker, all types of fruits, all types of pies, all the shit we make. Lemon meringue pie was not taught to us by no Europeans, that's something we did. Pumpkin pie, um, pie, cherry pie. Pie, um, um, peach cobbler, um, apple crisp. Right. You know, I'm a chef, so all, I, I, all of this shit. I've, I've, all of these are southern, are southern, um, are southern desserts, nigga. We had, we, we, yeah, ate, where the fruits grow right off the trees. Exactly. We ate three course meals, nigga, an appetizer, entree, and we had a dessert, nigga. <laughs> and nigga, might have some moonshine when it was done. 
I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But what, what do the I know? The only thing they bought was a <coughs> nasty ass pig on that boat with them. That's all they mm-hmm. bought. <laughs> oh, then look, I know uh, Empress that Hobart that showed. Um, uh, Empress Hobart that showed a video on um them coming over here to Ellis Island, and the guy was saying he never even seen a damn banana before. No, never. They never seen no. They bananas. never seen an orange. None of that. No. Tomato yet, sauce, tomato sauce. Look, look, the Italians make <coughs> all this, and that grow over here. So they got, so think of this, right? So boom, so you got the first people to come to Jamestown, Virginia, according to what they say, um, with Roanoke in the late 1500s. This is where you get that so-called whole nation of people who was killed or whatever. Um, then you fast forward to 1600s, you get the whole pseudo story about, oh, John Roof and all these motherfuckers capturing Pocahontas. You couldn't capture no Pocahontas, nigga. Pocahontas was, she had a, a thousand, if, if she existed, she had a thousand military Their men part. around her. So you, so you just came over and grabbed the chief um daughter and just took on a boat back to Europe and it threw her over the fuck out of here, nigga. It would have been on sight. Right, right, right. It would have been this. This would have been an on. This would have been a relentless pursuit to catch the assailants that committed that um atrocity amongst the princess of the Powhatans. How you gonna come back and you, you you look look think of it like this, right? Like right now, somebody get hurt in your area. These niggas just ain't coming back in the area. And if they come back in the area, it's gonna be it's gonna be a problem. It's gonna be a situation. Problem, damn! You better believe it. There's no business to be today. Exactly. So let's stop playing these games, <laughs> man. Like you know, what I'm saying you have we. That's why I showed. Um, I could have found a better um video, but that's why I showed the video in the beginning of showing you the contentions of the history that they teach us. Oh, they they was lynching us. They was doing if they was doing all that shit from sixteen nineteen all the way up to now, nigga, you wouldn't have a nigga owning three hundred and ten slaves. So obviously yeah, we <laughs> we had to be running this shit. It's impossible, man. Right. It's possible. Like think about it. Do that make any sense? It don't make no sense. Think about it. Oh, white people hate you so motherfucking much, right? They hate you so motherfucking much to the point to where they gonna give Anthony Johnson a 200, 250 acres of land with a plant with a ready made right. plantation on it. Really? Exactly. Stupid. <laughs> like, come on, man. Let's make some sense of this shit. Like, see, see, you told we told these stories and we sit there like you know at first like wow that's fucked up, but then we sit here and think about wait a minute, man. You said in 1619, you bought Africans. And then after you bought the first Africans in 1619, you continued that all the way up until the mid, the middle 1800s where they where they said you could not import any more slaves into South Carolina, meaning white people, right? Meaning white people. But right. how, how, however it goes, if, you know, and then remember Roots. Remember Roots, how they was terrorizing us. Oh, they cutting stomachs out of baby uh, out of women uh, babies out of um, um women's stomachs. They 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 tying niggas to horses and get the fuck out of here. Nigga. Yeah, All I'm, the- you, I'm gonna tell you that son of a gun there, man. Ooh wee, bro. They telling all that to keep us terrorized, man. They mm-hmm. keep it to keep you terror. They tell these stories to keep you terror. Oh shit, we better not cross master because the master. You heard the Negro. Talking about he had to put his head down. Get the fuck out of here, bro. How you right, put right. your head down when I just showed you the Negro? And I'm I'm saying, I know eventually. Hold on. I, hold on. I'm going to drop the link. I got it for Sister Soul real quick. I got about 15 minutes. I'll pick my thought up. Hey, hey, plus this, bro. This one don't make sense. Hey, man. You ain't buying a panel, yo. With the, the story with the African slavery. All they do is say they went and went to um, Africa, grabbed up some people, put them on a boat, sailed them over to America, dropped them off. Now they slave the end of the story, right? There ain't no detail, nothing. But when you look at you, the white slavery, they give you detailed events. <laughs> they, they, yo, they go, yo, they go say, nigga, they, they, they them fully on, they, elaborate yo, on it. From, yo, yeah, they elaborate. Yeah. Not only they, they go into detail what happened man, in England. To they got on the inbound, to on the boats where they had rats, where they had housekeepers, to the got off of Ellison Island, to Ellis, the list of the elves or the niggas on the land owners, they got used their last name, they looked at their tongue, they had doctors before they got off the boat, they looked at their tongue. You know that that was that's like an old method. 
Before they got off the boat, they looked at their tongue, make sure they didn't have a coated tongue. Because they, if them motherfuckers were sickly, they had to get back on the boat and take their ass back. Because they ain't want no motherfuckers spreading no diseases. That that's makes called, sense, that's called thrush. That's called thrush. That's what people with AIDS... That's what they, what people with AIDS get, um, what's that called, um, uh, um, what's that shit called, a yeast infection in the mouth, that's what thrush is. That's disgusting. Right. That's what thrush is. Yeah. I mean, they won't, cause, man, people come over here starving, man, I mean, conditions no, they, they came over here. they put them on the boat, bro. Ooh. That's what I'm and saying. This, bro, they, 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 so look, food. so look, but look, they, they look, look, check it out. <laughs> Look, look, this shit is funny, man. I, I gotta I, let me let me let me go for it, read this real quick once again, right? So look, hold up, is this one right here? Hold up. So let me see. All right, so it's right here. Go, y'all could build to our find to go ahead, cause I, I'm looking for this shit. So they came in 1619 with no guns and we just start whooping our ass. That don't make no sense. Yeah. Yo, niggas, if they fight, be fight police with guns and shit. And we ain't gonna fight a nigga with <laughs> a BB gun, no yo. Sense. And we had, yeah. we had arrows and other weapons and stuff. So look, check this out, right? So now this this story they did they, they apply to us too, right? They apply this story to us, right? It says they was chained with 50 other men to a board with a padlock collar around their necks the weeks of confinement below the deck in the ship i mean ship shifted shifting holding hold off often results in an outbreak of contagious diseases now it's two of them chlor 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 and dicentera 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 i don't know look them shits up they probably age i don't know Probably, if you look them up, they probably got the same symptoms as AIDS. But how? <laughs> hey, hey, how? If, them, if them niggas got the boat, everybody been dead, yo. They would have, yo. They would have infected everybody, yo. Oh, now we the guys, though. You know, we 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 dealing with we dealing with them naturopathics. On we we dealing with that shit on on a thousand, brother. So as soon as we were seeing one of them, we would already our, our frequency would have been so. Our frequency would have been so, or aura, aura would have been so strong to where that shit wouldn't been able to even affect us, brother. Yeah, 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 I forgot, but it, it still would have killed them pale skin niggas, though, bro. Oh, yeah, they yeah, that's a fact. They could have got the system with us, yo, you feel me? No. <laughs> no. So you think that when they, they went the in, let them off the boat. That was them on there? Yes. Like sardines. Exactly. And they show it. They even show you that they was packed like sardines in the pictures that they they got yeah. people standing on each other, man. That boat is so packed. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Like, bro, picture. Yeah, I've seen that. I got that shit. Pictures too. That's crazy. But bro, Speaking they used to have bro, Ooh. they used to have them jokers when they got captured trying to come over to the new world to them, right? Them niggas used to motherfucking um uh uh used to be held prisoner on the boat. The prison, those, those prison ships. Cause think about, look, understand this, yo. When they, when the United, when the colony was the first place ever, ever, everywhere else they had to get treated bad. When they came to the colonies, where they had some protection, that was the only place they had protection. But they was being captured on those motherfucking um, uh, prison ships. And that's where they get and the they, idea. Look, look, that's where they got. I, I want to let Sister Soul go. I'm sorry, I ain't mean to cut your wisdom, but I got to get out of here and go pick my no, daughter you good, in you about good. 12 minutes, right? But check this out, right? This is where they got get the idea of Rikers. Rikers is on a barge. Rikers State Prison is on a barge, and there's other barges out in the middle that's of the true. water. So, you know what I'm saying? So, this is where they get that's the like idea. Um, Angel Allen, too. Exactly. Yeah, bro. No doubt. Sister Soul, peace to the, uh, peace to the goddess. The mic muted. Yeah, mute you. Go ahead. Uh, everyone, everybody on the panel. Can you hear me now, brother? How you doing, Bill? I've been having delay sometimes. It barely let me in here. No, nah, it's all good. Go ahead, Bill. Sister. You hear me now? Great, great. How you doing, Carl? I'm Shout doing out to everybody. Oh, man, brother. Hey, well, you've been going in the last couple of days. I'm loving it. Hey, I mean, Listen, you know what, what? I wanted to say about them white Indians, right? I'm mm -hmm. looking for this. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. It's on you. Go ahead. No, it's what on you going to say? No, 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 no. Go ahead. I'm, I'm going to hear what you got to say. 
Yes, I ha- I found the book a couple of weeks ago, actually. I hadn't had a chance to look at it, so I looked into it last week. I'm going to look for it again so I can present it tomorrow. Now, in the book, it talks about the white Indians, right? So I'm like, white Indians? So reading it, right, it was saying how the Welsh, some of the Welsh people had came over and they were living on the riverbeds all along the lines, like where all the places, the same places that the colonies was, right? They had been there years. It said they had been there for years before uh, the so-called Columbus and all of this stuff, right? Now, with them being there, obviously they start mixing, some of them mixing and mingling with the copper colored people, so on and so forth. So this went on for like, like uh, it's saying about 150 years from what I can approximate, right? So with them mixing with these people, right, they were the mulattoes, you know, the Melungeons or whatever the case may be. These were the red Indians. So when they keep talking, we, we be hearing them saying the red Indians, the red man, this, this, and that. These were the red men because they had reddish hair when they came over. And a lot of them, even the ones when they start mixing, they were having like some of that reddish hair in their um in their heresy, right? Now, what I've been reading from different stuff, what this is just my story and interpretation of my discernment, right? These Welsh Indians were the white Indians, right? It talked about how they were always fighting with the with the copper color Indians. And it said the copper color Indians was beating them because they had bows and arrows and the copper Indians had guns. So now I'm looking like they had guns back then. They always talking about they brought the guns and you know this, this and that, da 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 da. But as we know, we were also like they always talking about cowboys and Indians. The cowboys and Indians was the same thing. That's a whole nother story. But um, <laughs> they had uh, we had the uh, the guns and they had the bow and arrow. So they would go on the riverbeds and they would get them and fight with them and they would take them as slaves. It said that they would take the white Indians. So the copper Indians were enslaving the white Indians. So what was going on? From what I'm understanding is after after so many years, you know, this going on, going on, they getting enslaved. They always losing the battle so on and so forth when the people started invading and coming over what they decided to do was you know what we're gonna group up with these people they more our color anyway we're gonna group up with them we're gonna have them come in and we can start the colonization because this is why they were doing the colonies on the rivers because this is where these people were living all of the white indians were on the riverbeds so when they started coming in they started grouping with them this is how they got them french the spaniards and they started um helping them to fight against us because they were always being beat this is the story that it was telling and it makes so much sense. Then when you read into the, the the understanding of these different Moors titles and why some of these Moors, when they say all the different Moors or whatever, the ones that came over here, they wanted to use that title as part of their, their theatrics per se, because they needed to have a way to influctuate the Indians and the particular ones that were um, on their side per se. So they were the ones that were helping them. They were the ones that were um, uh, conglomerating with them so that they could take over the land, start colonizing the areas. So now they got help. They got backup. So these particular nations decided to say, you know what? Now we're going to fight against you guys. There's an article, brother, and the article sh- says how they wanted to take the statehood. So the, all these five uh, particular nations decide to take the statehood. This is where the Moors comes in because they, they had a constructed government and they were tied to the land by saying they were promised. Each one of those Indians, it was 3,500 of them. No, 65,000 uh, of them, I'm sorry. It was 65,000 of these Indians out of the five tribes. Each one of them got allotted a certain piece of land and they got a, uh, uh, an allotment of $500. So when they got the money in the land, this is how they started setting up the reservation because they had the area here, an area here, an area here, so on and so forth. And they started the Indian, um, you know, the... Um, not only the Indian housing, brother. I know you got a few minutes. I'm trying to get some of this in. <laughs> so they started the Indian housing because they were giving them this certain allotments because they were part of the organized construction and the government that they constructed with them. So they were trying to limit them to a certain state, like in the area they were in, this part. They said, no, we want to stay here. They can roam all over the place. All of this started because at the time, too, when they started bringing them in, they were they they started all this so-called slave narrative stuff because they wanted to keep us bound because we were trading individually a tribe like one two or three families like hey cousin you want to go across the bridge which you know to us is like going across the water they going over here they are going to uh, walk into Russia they going to Asia they were literally walking and going places to trade the things that they had because all the different tribes had certain things that they always tilling on the land they were growing you know whatever the case may be it was it might have been gold silver copper. 
they were taking these things as 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 a group in tribes and moving. It wasn't just like oh, these certain people were seafarers. Every damn body was trading. Every Everybody that had something that they've been telling within they within they tribe, they would take those things and they'd be trading with the other tribe. They'd be trading with the other people. This is how all the training stuff happened. So they put that slave narrative in, started changing these names and saying, oh yeah, well this freedom, we're going to put white on their thing. We're going to put colored on there versus this and that. Start changing the document because they started forcing the slave or two because the slave or two kept them from being able to move. Because now, oh, if I move, I might get shot over here because they got us down as slaves. It was a whole... The, the slave shit is the whole thing just to keep us from trading. To keep us from having individual wealth and being able to maintain our own thing. And those people came in and helped these people come and just like debacle us. I just wanted to say that. I, I hope I got enough in. I'm, I know you're okay. <laughs> wow. That's interesting. That need to be a short right there. You need to You need to put that back together and make that a short. Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely. That's definitely some good information right there. And like I said, it's, it's so many different possibilities and things that we read that we're really trying to come and get a grasp of what really happened here. You know what I'm saying? And it's like I said, a lot of times they, they're not making it easy for us. they definitely not making it easy, but trust and believe this, right? You got ancestors, right? You got ancestors that want you to know this information. So therefore, they projecting a lot of this, a lot of these, um, a lot of these, how do, you, how do I want to say, um, downloads, right? They're projecting a lot of these downloads to give us the, the piece of the puzzle or even just to give you the idea to research something and you find information on it. That's what they doing. They helping us. They know we confuse down here. They know what they mm -hmm. doing. You see what I'm saying? They know what they doing down yeah. here. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? They know exactly what they're doing to us down here. So therefore, our ancestors is sitting back and they looking at a lot of this information and saying like, nah, we're we going to give them, we're going to help them because this information got to come out. And it's like I said, all of these years, like I said, I went to school, I dropped out of school in the 10th grade, um, went back to school in my late 20s, um, went to, went, shit, I, I done went to what? Uh, I went to a community college. I went to two universities. I went to Montclair State University and William Patterson. I'm still enrolled in William Patterson, but I don't think I'm going back, right? But however it go, though, I might go back just to finish up, just to get my master's, just for the hell of it. Because I started, then I only got 12 credits to go or whatever. Um, so you got to go get that, brother. On yeah. yeah, you gotta yeah, go get got that. And I don't have no problem really sitting in the classroom and shit, man. Cause I, you know how good it feels to be sitting in the classroom from being in a state prison, and then you go, you know, you go in a classroom among people who don't know you, and they don't know your story, they don't know who you are, they can't judge you. All they know that you sit in the same seats that they're sitting in. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So you know that's something. That, and like I said, I don't always like. I'm not a if you can make it without going to college, then that's wonderful, right? But um, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, if you have to go and um, get some type of information, make sure you get the information and make sure you be critical on it. Don't take the information like, you know, like I'm a, um, I went to school to be a chef. Um, I went to school to be a dietitian and I went to school for my MBA. But all of the dietitian shit is all some pseudoscience shit, bro. Or not all of it. Some of the micronutrients and some of the stuff that they show you is right and exact. But some of the other shit is just not right and exact, bro. And it's like you have to kind of like differentiate what the fuck is going on. What is these people saying? You have to find other research that can show you or can help you conclude with what's, you know what I'm saying, or try to help you right. at least come to some type of contention point, man. You know what I'm saying? Come to some type of contention. So definitely, man, at the end of the day, man, keep doing what y'all doing. I got to get out of here. I got to go pick my baby up. Um, But definitely, man, I appreciate everybody. Real quick, Um, I did see on my, that shit came on my other phone. I actually got two goddamn cash apps. So my other phone was dead. So, um, shout out to Glamour. Shout out, hold up, I'm sorry, hold up. Let me see this shit, shit down. Shout out to Glam, Glitter, for the $5 donation. Shout out to Roger W. 
Peace of the God, man. Roger been around for a long time. He's been supporting. Thanks for the $20 cash app. Um, Empress Awaken, thanks for the $5 cash app. Um, Chief Crazy over, I, didn't, I don't see the rest of it, but peace. Thanks for the $5 cash app. And Bane, thanks for the dollar cash app, man. So definitely appreciate y'all. Um, I got to get out of here to the next bill. Um, but I promise y'all, I'll at least do a bill once a week because I got so much shit to, um, to kind of go over. And, you know, so I promise y'all, I'll at least try to get y'all a bill once a week or whatever. And I see AP now, so, you know, definitely need um, somebody along with App TV, along with the rest of the brothers and sisters, um, Chief Holiday, um, and all the other brothers and sisters, um, Empress Holbrook. Um, Sister Betty, everybody out there that's doing their due diligence. So shout out to all y'all. Um, shout out to all the Aborigines, North, South, Central, and the Kajoin Islands. And like I said, make sure you guys. These is talking points, man. How did a slave own three hundred? How, how did a slave who was once a slave own three hundred and ten slaves? Make some sense of it. So with that being said, peace to the gods, peace to the gods. It's your humble brother, Ahanu Kiel, a.k.a. A1. Thank to everybody coming through on, on the panel. Thanks for that drop, sister. So shout out to my brother. Nonetheless, nonetheless, we still we still going over this crime scene. Shout out to all the other brothers on the panel, man. Thank you all for coming through, man. And like I said, this information Thank you, brother. is for y'all, man. Ain't no egos involved in it. I know sometimes yeah, yeah, we need it. We need it, brother. <laughs> Indeed, man. Peace, man. I gotta go, man. But peace, peace, peace. I appreciate y'all right, coming. Peace, through. everybody. Peace, 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 peace.